Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to yet another episode of Wrist Shot Week, episode 22, I believe. Okay, let me start by just saying hi to everyone in the chat, and we can get started. Uh, Shane, Forbin, Leo, Raymond, Dr. Bob, Eric Bell, Benjamin, Underachieving, 121 Click Bezel. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for joining, and please let me know if you can hear me. Uh, tag me in the chat, whatever, type one, as we normally do, and let's get the show on the road. It's It's big. It's a long one. I, I'm actually, you know, this is coming from someone who tends to do marathon shows. This one might be quite extensive. I've had to cherry pick the submissions that came in because, okay, you can't, Valeria, thank you. I see Mark is joining us and Steve and Sam Ray, welcome all of you from all over the world. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you for joining in. So uh, yeah, it's been like two weeks since we did one of these shows and it's the funniest thing sitting down trying to refresh the mind, get everything prepared. And there's like over two weeks of backtracked submissions that, that I had to go through. There were like 50 plus emails that I had to save on top of the new submissions. So I can see more ones in the chat. Thank you, Benjamin, and a couple others. Thomas, welcome, Thomas. Blue shirt, I see you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, yeah, if you want to ask me some questions, tag me in the chat and we can get going. We can definitely talk about uh, some new releases that have been happening while all those going on in the background. Let's just start with what's on the screen. Um, a little bit of a different take. This is a uh, Glenn Morangi uh, La Santa, which is superb. Would recommend everything you're seeing on the screen right now. Of course, we've got the secret stash. This is just a, a tiny amount of what is normally in the storage cupboard. So just to let you know, if anyone is watching or representing Fisherman's Friends, I can attest that your stuff saves the show. It saves my voice and uh, would fully recommend this to you. Um, I alluded to a new watch purchase in the most recent video. I'll put it in the corner of the screen if you're catching up, but it's about watch collecting and how it's never fully complete. Case in point, I've joined the Seiko crew and uh, I'm working on the video now. The review video should be up next week, Saturday, taking photographs and getting all that prepared. But what a watch. They have done such a good job with this. I can talk about it very briefly. I want to say hi to you in the chat again. I'll try my absolute best. Raymond, you're asking about the Joker. Yes, it will be featured. Variety is off the chain. And I, I feel like you're all in cahoots. I say this often because they're all sports watches in one way or another. And this was not planned. It's just there's there's barely any gold featured at all. It's all, still, it's all steel. Uh, every brand you can probably think of, Seiko's, Tudor's, JLC's, lots of little bits of vintage here and there, Panerai, the Rolex, that's just nuts. There's really, it's amazing just how these selections line up. And I'm the only one who knows what's coming up. And I can tell you, there's some really great stuff. The photography is also incredible. Okay, so let me try and catch up. Going to have Mitch's bourbon, Bouchard says. Well done. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to share what's going on on the show. Uh, reminds me of Scotland, Watch Beginner says. Yeah, sure does. I am part Scottish, so it works. Uh, Forbin saying, a guest from Scotland brought... And long, wow, I've never heard of that that name before. Very smoky. Oh, Glenn Morangi. Yeah, yeah. Got it. I'm going to have to run through these. There's so many chats going on at the moment. I'm going to miss you. Tag me in the chat and I'll be able to see it faster. And let's get the show on the road. Um, I'm literally on Amazon now getting Fisherman's Friend Cherry Flavor. Valeria would highly recommend it. Honestly, it has saved me so many times running these shows. I cannot, cannot say that enough. Right. So SB, SPB143, it's my first Seiko. Uh, the review video will be done by Saturday, but in a nutshell, my closing uh, thought in the in the talk was something along the lines of, I'm so glad that I got into this Seiko as my first, because the, the overall uh, feel of this watch when it comes to the fits, the bracelet, all those little elements, it's a watch that doesn't feel like it's lacking in anything really, if you know what I mean. It's not a watch that you need to upgrade the bracelet or upgrade the crystal or the movement itself. Everything seems a lot more considered and that's, I think, the strong suit with this. And talking about watch collecting, we recommend that video. I'll, I'll link it again in the corner and it goes through a lot more specifics about how a brand can bring you into a watch hobby, or sorry, a new segment of watch collecting that you didn't even consider before seeing it. So. Should be, a, should be a good time. Let's get to the main limelight watch that became the cover photo. We've seen a couple of these featured, and it is the Moses Streamliner Center Seconds. 
this submission came in from Time Traveler, and I do have his Instagram, so I'll put that into the chat when we get there. Uh, yes, I do. He sent in a handful of wrist shots as well as some beautiful photographs. He, he does some amazing stuff. So we're going to have a look at those in a second. As Sierra is saying, congrats on, the congrats on the purchase. He says, which caliber is the Seiko? I will, uh, let's have a look. Aha. It's the 6R35. That helps you. I Trust me, I'm, I'm no Seiko nut. This is the first time I've ever worn a Seiko, or should I say owned a Seiko. I've tried on the SKXs and the rest before. 6R35. It's got a 70-hour power reserve, which is crazy. Sam Ray talking about the specs. It's like 40.7 mils, 20 mil bracelet, got 13 mil height, I think, has a dia shield coating on the steel. It's superb. I will definitely, when I get into the part two series of the video, I'll get a lot more into the specs. Talk about the, the SLA 017 and the 037 and the 62 MAS and all that. Yeah, it's going to be good. And Moses, Raymond says, yeah. So, so Moses Streamliner, we love it. Blue Shirt saying congrats. I saw that you also have a Seiko to share with us, so we're definitely going to focus on that just now. Um, Moses Streamline, I've nicknamed this the Green Mamba. It's just something about this watch that speaks. I mean, it looks like a snakeskin, right? It has this articulating bracelet that speaks to that kind of nature. Uh, it's an awesome piece. Also really like the size. Um, the whole, it's, it's like 40 millimeters in size, so it probably fits the wrist a lot better than you would think. I would love to experience this watch. I hope to one of these days, given the chance. Um, I think it's the same as the prospects, Raymond says. Now we're just chatting about Seiko, it's so good. Tanzil, absolute pleasure having you here, saying, I used to own the original vintage watch. Wow, the 60 MAS, yeah, pretty cool watch. Had an original small crown version. Vintage Seiko divers were fun, cheap collecting. And now they're going for like 5K plus, if I remember, in, in pound sterling. Funny enough, this is the first time we featured a design like this on the show, I think. And it just so happened that one of the owners, I think his name is Tommy, he sent in an SLA 037, which is the the more updated, bigger brother of this, the one that pays more tribute to more closer tribute to the 62 MAS. This is like the, the modern take. Excellent value for money, I think. For the price you're paying for these, definitely talk about it more in the review videos. It's just too much time uh, to, to discuss that and everything else. Um, Right, so as I keep motoring through, so awesome, Moza. We've chatted about this enough in the past. There's so many little aspects to it. The racing, uh, the racing dial, the green fume is just gorgeous. And this is not the only Moza we'll be seeing. There's lots and lots more. Moving on next, another shot from Time Traveler. Now we can really take in the photography. Vacheron, I think this is the Gen, the Gen 3 overseas. I can't say I see this dial very often. It almost has a gray insert around them. That's so beautiful. The photography, again, just... Take it all in, appreciate it, as I hit more coffee. Oh, hitting the microphone with the coffee cup. I tell you, it's the weirdest thing, trying to get back into the seat of presenting again after being away for two weeks. It's like a whole new uh, realm, and I've got to wait it like a good 20 minutes for the coffee to hit the brain before I'm settled. Um, I see Megan's joining us. Welcome, Megan. Um, and yeah, there's just, I'm missing you all in the chat. Sorry, everyone. Uh, it's it's going to be consistent because there is just so much, there's so many watches to talk through and so much variety in the space. So we're going to, this is not the only overseas Gen 3 that we're going to see, but we can appreciate the colors, the lighting. Um, and I'm going to actually put his Instagram handle in the chat right now for all of you to look at. If you're on Instagram, a week on the wrist, I hope I'm spelling this out right. This gent gets these watches for a week. He gets to review them, gets to photograph them, sends them back, travels all over the place. I hope he doesn't mind me sharing his handle, but the, the photography is beautiful. And there's, yeah, there's a lot, a lot to take in. Right, VC overseas. And last but not least, we're going to be looking at a Explorer 2. The quality of this photo, I need to zoom right in. I don't think this is the this is not the only 42 millimeter explorer. I think we have at least two more during the show. I tell you, it's nuts. It's sports watch centric. If if you're not a fan of sports watches, this is probably not the best. We do have a few little hidden gems like a Patek 5205, I think, at one stage. We have a Jean Resonance and other bizarre pieces that, that come up. But uh, for the most part, sports seems to dominate it. And that's why the, the theme of the show is around sports watch madness. Um, Speaking of the El Primero, there's lots of them featured too on the show, so that should be a good time. 
Uh, and there's so many more who are joining in that I can't even say hi to. Uh, Michael, and I see Mr. JJ, Chaz from the Berg. Welcome, Steve Britton. For, oh, Fahim is, well, he, he did send in his uh, submissions, so we will be having a look at that in a moment. He probably comes in at like 11 o'clock in the UK. Racing strap looks great. It is a racing strap, right? It has perforated. That's very clean. Look at the quality of this photo, though. You can get, you can like, you can see the individual grain of the leather. I swear this is like a 20 megabyte size photo. Look at that. And you can appreciate quality control. Rolex has had a few little niggles with quality control in the past with painting on their hands, if I'm not wrong. And here we can see that this one has been pretty well addressed. Look at the gloss finishing on the hands and everything there. It's amazing. I hope Orange Hand is watching and drooling. Uh, he sent in an awesome W10 that we'll have a look at later. And then we move. Uh, El Primero, gee, haven't seen any of those this week. Yeah, no, 121. I'm actually going to make a video on it. I've been asked a couple of times about my thoughts on the new release. It's a very interesting watch. I love that bezel. Makes makes such a more practical complication to have a bezel that's actually usable to read the tenth of a second. I look forward to breaking it in. Uh, I spent yesterday, Friday, coming up with a few drawings, a few design alterations and modifications I've made to it as well. So yeah, it should be a good time. By Tuesday next week, that video should be out, I think. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's just there's so much and so little time. I can tell you that. There's so much work and there's so many ideas. I've got like 50 ideas listed, but it's just thinking that it's, it takes between 10 and 12 hours to prep these things. So you have to like time manage crazily. Okay. I love the Explorer 2. We will be seeing more of these as the show commences. Uh, next up from Alex. Now, there were quite a few emails that I got from from you out there saying that this is the first time you've sent in watches to the show. And I think Alex is one of them. Now, if I'm not wrong, I'm going to actually turn this sideways. This is not the only Submariner we're going to see. And in fact, we're going to see plenty of the new Submariners, the one, two, I think we're only going to see the one, two, four, zero, six, zero in this category. So the way you can, oh no, sorry, magic mouse. Oh no, my magic mouse is actually broken. Um, the way you can differentiate, as far as I know, is there's a crown at the base here. Uh, the Submariner text is a little bit bolder. There's a few differences with the crown guards, and the obvious change is the taper of the case. Now, I could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong and say that this is a 1-4. I actually typed in 114060, but I feel like this is the latest iteration. Someone, please let me know. But we're going to see so many of them. It's, it's ridiculous. I think there's like at least five of the new Submariners featured on the show. Uh, okay, going to carry on. Let's see Hans is in the chat. Welcome, Hans. And uh, Tarista is saying, if you have a big belly and wear a sports watch, is it a controversy? If you have a big belly and wear a sports watch, you know, I mean, you think of the the heavy weightlifters out there, the uh, the iron, not iron men, the strong men. They have huge bellies, and I would say that you can consider them athletes for what they do, right? So no. Not necessarily. Uh, Moose Man says, I threw out my magic mouse. Yeah, I don't, the, the haptic feedback, that motor has gone. So I'm just playing by, by touch here, and it's not easy. Alex, thanks for sending us in. The photography is incredible, and we will keep seeing it. Now, lots of you send in not one, but like five submissions. So I sometimes have to be a bit more picky about the watches that come in, and I save, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's difficult. So I'm going to try my best here. I did not, this is a, a Mont Blanc. And I don't know the, the name. A lot of the times these submissions come in without the descriptions. And I'm saving these at like three in the morning, as most of you know. So I do struggle with these, but the submissions are just superb. I'm guessing it's it's an navigation watch of some kind. It's to do with uh, flying because it does have the, the aerospace kind of theme with the Dauphine hands and the cathedral hands and the compass bezel. Someone might need to help me with the reference. Right. And I'm going to carry on with the chat. I'm getting so many. I must be a strong man based on my girth, 121. That's funny. Uh, Foreman says, Rolex Sub answers the question, what do you read if you have no books and newspapers, your dial text? We have a few Daytonas as well, so we'll see more of that later on. But you know, looking at that, we're going to get to the subs again a bit later on, but looking at that watch, I could fully consider that to be my exit level watch in the Rolex sphere. Just a plain, simple Submariner. I do like what they've done with the tapering of the case. The bracelet I'm very interested in experiencing. Um, very seldom that you actually see these Mont Blanc pieces. Uh, let's see, Carl, Carl mentioning that um, has dots for the highest peak of each continent. Really? On the on the sides here, that's fascinating. 
Yeah, again, I didn't do much research into this watch. There's going to be a few serious outliers. I think Russell sent in a whole series of Ulysses Nardans that I didn't even get the names for, but it's going to be a good time. You can just appreciate the the prettiness and the variety and uh, as it always is as it always goes and i'm sorry there's like 50 comments that i haven't gotten to and really i see shy towns joining us from china welcome shy town i see junior johnson bud the stud so many more of you out there go okay next from alex this one is quite the outlier outlier understated model in this category the, the globe master but this has a annual calendar complication and I love it for its, whenever it comes to, to, I mean, you can call this a blend of dress and sports in many ways. I love it when it you know, occupies the dial, <clears throat> when the space in the dial is occupied correctly with certain features. The whole idea of a pointed date, that's always a nice element. And in this case, we have the days or the months all aligned, very nicely, awesome script with a separate hand pointing to each. Very clean. It's... It's funny because this watch does ride that line of being very classically inspired, but also quite contemporary. If we look at the development of the constellation, this is not the only one. I think we have another, we have four constellations that are going to be featured later on. But this one taking the more classic approach of a pointer hand is quite a nice clash of a more modern take and a vintage take at the same time. Uh, very seldom we see these. I think this is in stainless steel. I don't think there are any white gold elements. Maybe I'm wrong, but the bezel is tungsten, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe the bezel might be white gold in this, in this combination here. But it's just a really nice piece. I think the balance is great. There's some nice symmetry everywhere there. Watch that's very underappreciated. I saw a meme the other day. If you don't follow Bro Dinky on Instagram, do it. And I think it was something like it was a funeral, and there was a comment, a speech bubble in the corner saying that the Globemaster is an underrated watch. Just like so out of place, but just it was hilarious. Okay, uh, more of you in the chats. Yeah. Zahira, by the way, your um your zenith is featured at the very end, so that should be good. Some beautiful shots you sent us. Last off from Alex is a, I, I call this a flight master, but it's not. It's a sea master with many little flight master elements. Look at the size of it. It feels like it's a thirty-five mil piece. And I mean, there's just so many quirks in the watch collecting video that I put out this week. I said something, I spent way too much time writing that one out, but I mentioned how you can spend your entire life becoming an expert of one brand and still find surprises along the way, or you can be a jack of all trades. Most of us in this space tend to be the jack of all trades. We love looking at uh, the variety of pieces out there because there's just so much. Uh, but in, in the camp, like when you look at Seiko, or you look at Omega and the variety that they offered. I mean, this is like a late 60s, 70s. It's probably more directly in line with the 70s with this arrangement. There's just so much to take in. This one on a bunt strap, it just looks great. It's a really nice little selection of pieces. Blue Shirt saying, uh, very never seen this before. I've never seen the size of this kind of watch before either. Jack of all trades. Yes, Clive, thank you. I knew you'd be dropping that line in. Uh, Clive, Clive with his humor. Please tag me in the chat, Clive, so I can see it because I need to I need to spice up the humor as the show goes. Just remember, I'm settling in. It's already been 20 minutes, and we haven't even gone anywhere. <laughs> How long is the show going to be? Right, water in. Catching up in a moment. I've had three cups of coffee. And I still don't think that'll suffice. Mentioning that the bezel is tungsten. How heavy is it? Yeah, exactly. I think I got that right. Right, next up to Alfredo. Thank you for these, Alex. Alfredo sends in a 42 mil. We've seen one of these already. Can you believe? 42 mil Explorer black dial. And I need to say that he sent like 16 images through WeTransfer. And uh, the problem was the images were corrupted, unfortunately. So Alfredo, if you would like, please can you send those images through again for the next show because they were beautiful. Such a nice varied selection. I only chose this out of the, I think only three of them passed through and there were case backs and stuff. So uh, Alfredo, if you could send those images again, somehow, I don't know. Unfortunately, the WeTransfer link broke the images as they came through and I try to save them. Uh, Freddie Turner from London and so many more of you coming in. Uh, Forbin saying Seamaster well, with an airplane hand. Maybe they mean seaplane. Yeah, I mean, the, they really milked the Seamaster name back in the day. It's, it's just the recognizable name of the time. And I, it, it's funny that they don't do it as much now. Considering like during the 70s, they were just going 
Think of it. I mean, they had Seamasters with chronograph complications, three to one movements. Here's another example where this should technically be like a baby flight master, if anything, not a Seamaster. Don't know what warranted the name, but I guess it was just something so relatable. I mean, this watch can't go in the water. The Seamaster name's a mess, kind of like the Constellation. They went all over the show back then. Sky, Sky Chief, I love that, love that. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to get to the chats now. And Alfredo, thank you for sending this. We do have another excellent shot of a polar in the snow later on. Speaking of snow, I hope all of you in the Northern Hemisphere are okay. <laughs> Apparently, it's going to be snowing on the south coast of England tonight and tomorrow. Uh, I will eat my socks if that happens. Um, let's see. Shaitan says, what's the difference between a cow and the moon landing? Omega can't milk the cow for 51 years. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's good. I gotta say that they are doing such a nice job with just some of the re-releases they've been, the reinterpretations they've been bringing out lately. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. Q is saying off topic, just joined. Hope you didn't already talk about this, but what do you think of the Zenith Al Primero? I hope you're just joking, uh, Q Maestro. Uh, I have already discussed it, but I will be making a video that will come out on Tuesday in the next, what, four days. I'm working on it at the moment. My head is spinning, I tell you. I'm editing at the same time as getting all these images saved. It's just it's ridiculous. Okay, Alfredo, thank you for this. Please send in those shots again because the photos were beautiful. So much variety, some high horology in there too. Next time, I will have them saved. Next up to BDEV. Now, BDEV sent a selection of pieces in, but this shot was pretty, pretty interesting. This is the Monaco at Monaco, the 1958 uh, 16th. F1 Grand Prix. And it's, I mean, these cars are just so sublime. I'll get into it now. And this being not the caliber 11, the crowns, the other, I think they call it the caliber 12. Yes, the caliber 12. You can tell that because the dial is a bit different and because the crown is not on the left hand side, obviously. And uh, it's quite fitting seeing this watch in this place here. Now I'm going to try, I'm going to take a wild swing at these two cars. Maybe this is like a, oh, what were they making back then? Come on, good name, come to mind. I can't. I can't think of the name of the brand. I mean, I make, I, I restore the Dinky toys, the Dinky and the Corgi toys. I should know all of these names. This looks like a Ferrari. I see a yellow badge there. Maybe Maserati. The 16th Formula One at Monaco in 1958. These guys were just out of their minds. You know, this is great. This, this is not a photo. I think it's, it's a poster out of a magazine. I don't, don't crucify me. I have no idea. But BDEV, if you're in the chat, there you are. It's a Van der Waal. A Van der Waal? I've never heard of that name before. I was thinking it was an English-made brand of some kind. Van Waal and Ferrari. Thank you, Justin. Okay. Okay. Going to move on. i got to keep motoring. We have so many submissions, as you can see on the left-hand side, and there's so much. Right. Uh, to BDEV next, another shot of a Tudor Heritage. As far as I know, there are few. This is not the 58, which is a surprise. It's not. It's definitely the 41. I think. Uh, there's no guilt to this dial, so it must be the 41. These watches are still loved by all everywhere out there. Um, the BRG color scheme, Shaitan, that, that's what I was considering. A Jag, yeah, Freddy, that, me too. I, uh, I was struggling with Bugatti, and I was just guessing out, guessing out the cars. Right, uh, so many more chats. Sorry, guys. I'm going to try my best to catch up with you. Just tag me. Tag me in the chat, and I'll be able to see it quicker. Um, what made you think the car was English? Was it broken down the side of the route? Clive, you'd be surprised. Uh, in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, British cars, British mechanics were amazing back then. Uh, think of the Land Rover, the original Landy, the Mark I, the Mark II, short wheelbase, incredible cars, bulletproof. Uh, sadly, that, that disappeared over time, but in the racing side of things, they were so resilient. Think of Jag, just Jaguar back then. They were thrashing Ferraris and all sorts. So yeah, that's a pretty good one though, Clive. I love it. Keep the humor coming, Clive. I need it. Oh, I've got the dregs of my third coffee left. I'm going to hit the La Santa and I'll be with you in a moment. La Santa is such a good drop. I just hope I don't lose my voice. Black Bay 41. Uh, I do miss the smiling self-winding. This, this is a strange watch. I, don't, I might be completely... Hold on a second. I see a red triangle here. This is a this is the 58. Help me out. <laughs> um, no, it's not. It's not. This doesn't have a gilt dial unless it's the wrong color. I don't know. 
I do miss seeing the rose on the dial. I think that's the one thing that they should never have sacrificed. The Tudor rose on the dial just made it sing. Um, and after experiencing a Black Bay 58, courtesy of Showcase Watches, I can say they are brilliant pieces to get yourself going. BDEV saying Heritage Black Bay 41. Thank you, BDEV. I've had such an interesting time after experiencing this, that the typical dial layout that we see so often on sports models, and then hopping to a completely new scheme, a completely new genre of squared off, you know, trapezoid. These aren't actually rectangles. These are trapezium shaped. Uh, there are rectangles at the quarters, but diver dials, just they, they really do evoke different feelings as you uh, experience them over time. It'd be a very interesting contest seeing the comparison between the Tudor and the, uh, and the Seiko. Right. Moving on. So, BDEV, thank you for this. We're jumping to Ben next. And he sends in two classic Hoyas. Now, we haven't seen Hoyas for a while. Now, these being, I, this is a Carrera, on a Gay Frere bracelet. He sent me a good description here. Gay Frere, a beads of rice bracelet reference. Hold on to your hat. 73653SM, silver dial, navy subdials. Thanks for the description, Ben. It saves my life having a bit of a, a lengthy description to discuss these. And yeah, Hoya just knew what they were doing back in the day with their dial designs. There's just so, so much, so, so much to get through. I love this tacky. Don't need meter on there. Just keep it simple. So there was a question asked of me about the new Zenith. The one thing that really stands out to me, if I'm not wrong, the caliber 3600 is not a new caliber. It's been around for like two years. Uh, but the idea of, and in fact, they, this is not the first time they've introduced the whole 10 second bezel. They didn't, they didn't introduce it on the 50th anniversary model, I think. It's such a useful feature to have instead of the tachymeter. Who the hell uses a tachymeter bezel on a daily basis? Calculating the tenth of a second just, just makes more sense. You know, It's much more practical for its purpose. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun talking about it. I look forward to sharing a bit more uh, detail on that as it goes. I see Tennessee Mike joining us, Norcar Lane. Welcome. And yeah, more and more of you. Hans, I see you again. Right on. So... 1972, but the next watch that's coming up, I think, is a darling, a real fan favorite in the space, and it is the 1971 Carrera. And it's, I love the style. This is, I mean, this, when it comes to classic dial arrangement, this is something that lines up with the likes of, you know, the Speedmaster when it comes to just brilliance. Hoyer knew what they were doing. Their watches were just so renowned. These are difficult to come across today. Uh, so it's a reference 2447N, if anyone's interested out there. It's just beautiful. I think it's probably like 36 mils, a real watch of its time. But I just, just everything about it, you know, the Hoya logo, the names there, the white hand, no tacky meter. It's just plain and simple. It has, I don't know how you would call these, semi liar lugs, very faceted edges. That's all you need. I mean, when it comes to a chronograph, you want sheer simplicity. That is it. And only the enthusiast will know what it is. It doesn't stand out in your face like a, like a Speedmaster would. It's just under the radar. There's lots of uh, varieties of these out there. I think some of them have silver dials with red hands too. And they, they used to be sleepers, very under the radar. But the, the vintage Hoyo collectors have snatched them all up. And I would imagine this watch probably goes for like, I don't know, between eight and $10,000, 6,000 pounds-ish. Which is which is nuts. The gold Hoya Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, that was funny, huh? I love that um, the whole thinking that I mean it was based on a submariner, you know, it's that 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 whole reference from the eighties. And it makes you think it's kind of a nice way of, of approaching watches. I made it a video about watches and film, God knows how long ago, seven months ago or something. David mentioning when I see a classic Hoya and see Tag Hoya is today, it makes me sad. Yeah, I mean it is it is pretty sad how the brand has fallen from grace. It's it's a pity. I mean, it, it branding does affect people's opinions on it, unfortunately. It still makes some awesome reissues, though. Um, I would gladly jump on a reissue given the chance. But these vintage pieces, I mean, the movements, everything you're paying for, it's just a work, a real machine, really built for purpose. Um, the secret is the Hoya lettering. Yes, beats the bloody lion or silly over his wings. I've got to say, it is sharp. It's like a shield logo that's just the type is amazing. We're going to see some great typeface. I, you know, we try our best to cover typeface during these shows. Got to carry on. We've been running for half an hour and I'm still 
<laughs> Clive saying, waiting for the follow-up on watches featured in adult movies. Clive, uh, for the most part, I've seen Daytonas be the most popular. Just uh, throwing it out there. Moving next to Blue Shirt Buddha. Now, as far as I know, Blue Shirt, Blue Shirt's not a Seiko guy. I don't know if this is if this is a new a new watch, a new pickup for him as well. If it is, congratulations, Blue Shirt. But I do want to also tag uh, Watch Talk with the Punters, which happens on a Sunday. I need to give these guys a shot. They have a guest on every week, and it's a great time. I love sitting in the wings and just listening in and being in the chat. It's a great, a lot of fun. So uh, Sunday, they run the show. I don't know what time, uh, like 7 p.m. UK time. So the rest of the world, it's, it's early afternoon, I would imagine, in the States. Uh, there's, there's a lot to talk about in their shows and it's it's so well prepared i mean this this isn't well prepared next to it you know so let's talk about this this is a king turtle if i'm not wrong prospects as well i'd imagine it probably has a similar movement to the one i have now save the ocean yes because of the blue type a. blue shirt let us know if this is your first seiko in the space because you and i share similar views about seiko watches which is i don't know quite naive of us saying that they all kind of look the same in many ways, they all have similar design cues, but it's great seeing that this watch is on the wrist. 2 p.m. Eastern. Okay. 2 p.m. Eastern. Please, Blue Shirt, uh, drop, the, drop the name of your channel uh, in the description, if you'd like. Not in the description, in the chat. Let everyone know. Go and check out Watch Talk with the Punzers. We highly recommend. It's a great time to just sit back and enjoy an overall discussion. As you can probably tell, I talk way too much. And uh, Eric Bell says uh, it's a four... R35. And if I haven't said hi to you, Eric, welcome. It's always a pleasure having you here. It's my only Seiko. It's good. So we're both Seiko dive watch owners. It's great, Blue Shirt. I love it. I love it. And this is not the only King Turtle Save the Ocean. As far as I know, Sam Ray has the same wash. Uh, and let's be honest, <laughs> Rose Rolexes look the same as well. Shy Town. There's no denying that. Uh, you know, every watch has its own, every brand has its own design language, and they all have their own key traits, which I think is worth exploring. That's what makes these these talks so much fun. All right, uh, Blue Shirt, thank you. I love the shot too. Get to capture that dial very nicely. Moving on to Circle Rouge. I hope I got your name right. Now, first thing that caught my attention was the Pelagos Blue offset, a little bit of focal blur. And then I moved to what was on the table. Now, the first I saw this photo for the first time and actually looked at it tonight, today. And I said to myself, that is a one huge wine glass. But then I thought again, I mean, look at the size of it. It's the size of a fishbowl, right? And if anyone knows what a fishbowl is in the drinking space, it's, it's huge, right? The more I look at it, the more I think it's a gin glass. So someone help me out. This looks like a gin glass, but maybe I'm wrong. But it's great to see a Pelagos in action. I see Winston Churchill there. That's awesome. Got some ash saved up. So yeah, the Pelagos blue dial, we've featured them. We haven't featured many blue, but the black dial, the left-hand drive, we feature them often, all the wine. It's, it's huge, right? It's like 500 mils of wine right there. I've never seen a glass so big. It's, uh, it's all to do with aeration, of course, if you, if you, know, your, if you know your drinking habits. Uh, 500 meters of wine. Yeah, I love you guys. Uh, and again, thank you all for joining in. Those who I haven't said hi to already, it's, it's an absolute pleasure having you here. Tom saying Panerai are also different. We're going to see a Panerai later on, would you believe? Uh, missed the first 30. Don't worry, George. We've barely started. Like We've only run through 10 watches. Good God. 35 minutes in. I've got to keep motoring through this. Mm -mm. Is that hash or resin in the ashtray? Forbin, you'll have to ask Circle Rouge that question. And I hope I haven't botched your name too badly. Uh, Icapod is back, but sadly without Mark Newsom. Oh, you're kidding me! As, as in, as in he's been he's left the chair. I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. Glad that the brand is back. I'd love to hear my thoughts. You know, Icapod did some good stuff, and other brands have stolen the ideas from. Sadly, I we have featured them before. Um, I'll talk about it in a moment. Tudor Black Bear, sorry, Tudor Pelagos, Blue Bezel, Blue Dial, Titanium. Lots of things to appreciate with this piece. It's a real workman's watch. I think it, if you want the truest expression of what a snowflake is, this is probably the best it's going to get, at least for now, sadly. Uh, I would love to see the Black Bay 58 with a more snowflake-inspired dial and everything there. We speak about it so, so often. So, I mean, yeah, been there, done that. Jumping next to Chris. Thank you, Circle Rouge. Oops, magic mouse. Now, how cool is this? This is Washington Square. Park, hold on, Washington Square Park in Greenwich in uh, New York. 
I mean, this is the scene. This is where you see all the films happening, right? This is like one of the icon areas. And he's wearing a Damasco DA47. Look at that dial. I love the negative dials. There's just something so charismatic about it. And it really does feel like a true feel of Flieger watch, I should say. So the question, the, the talking point about uh, Mark Newson's Icopod pieces, I think they came out in the 90s. And one element I know that brands like FP Jean actually copied was the handset. Have a look. If you have a Google tab open, check out Icopod and you'll probably see what I mean. The handset is, I think, one of the best, most organic handsets you can find on a watch. And as far as I know, Jean actually copied that for their pieces. Don't know if there was any legal stuff going on, but got to say, really nice combination. And there's some, there's some good stuff. Uh, Marcello is watching. He is from Italy. He's a designer. And he really enjoys Icopod. He actually has one, and we featured it a few times. Okay, I've got to catch up with you in the chat. Well, I think Clive mentioned something. Hope it's a tactical watch. It sure looks pretty tactical to me. Huh? I do love the arrangement. Fully loomed dial. It's very charming. The Flieger should technically have two dots at the triangle, though, if I'm not wrong. Damasco is a brand I do not know. It says made in Germany, so I guess it does have that heritage there. I'm sure it's probably running, maybe it's running a Seiko-based movement with a day date. Someone correct me. Yeah, there's just so much going on. I love this photograph. It's so nice seeing landmarks and icons of places. This is not the only time. As we as we go through, we'll see a few more landmark places. Right, Chris, thank you for sending this in. A real gem seeing this watch loomed up in the dark. To Dan the Watchman, he sent in quite a couple, so I saved a few of them for us to hold on, to get through. Uh, right, right, I'm missing you all in the chat. As always, uh, my friend Felix is a brilliant little field watch. Yes, it is, Megan. I was going to take, I just forgot about it tonight. I was going to take a photo to share with everyone. I promise for next show, I will. We need to do a giveaway. It's a gorgeous watch. I've been wearing it every evening going out for walks, and the accuracy is amazing. Little drop Felix. A couple of us have been getting it, and it's an awesome little watch. I promise to share it next week, the next show we do. Right, carrying on through. There's a nice loom. Very nice. Very, very nice. Offset dates. There's all sorts, yeah, skyrocket thing. Okay, Ebel. It was mentioned about El Primero, really. So Orange Hand mentioned, so this has an El Primero movement. I had no idea. Now, this is a reference 1911, like, like the cult. Um, and Dan the Watchman said this in the email, saying that um, never planned on buying it, just came across its path and pulled the trigger. And he's putting this question out to everyone there. Has anyone else experienced this before, where it's just a watch you stumble on without planning? And it just ends up in your collection. This is one of them. It's a fascinating piece. It has all sorts of peculiar, very type 20 aesthetic with the way the dial's been arranged there. I didn't know it had an El Primero movement. That just pushes it into a completely different category, right? Awesome. Dated 430. Funny how polarizing this is. I do appreciate it offset. I don't like it when it's smack in your face. In this, in this kind of configuration, it's not too, you know, it doesn't get in the way as much. I guess that's divisive. You could say it does because it's a little bit large relative to the, the numerals on either side. But still, I, I do prefer it at the 430 with chronographs especially. And that's probably the best giveaway that it's a Zenith movement, right? With the date there at the side. Okay. The last dregs of the third coffee. Am I going to survive? Don't know. Right on. Let's get back into the chat. One thing I also appreciate about this piece is that it's fully brushed. Fully brushed chronograph, pretty rare in this category. Style conflict, softly curved yet uses sharp-faced screws. Very uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, right? Is this kind of like a 90s? I would imagine it's a 90s era piece. It has a T-Swiss T-dial. Yeah. So remember, this is the first time I'm seeing half of these. I just save, file away, save, file away. So I'm experiencing this watch for the first time with you. Um, it feels very German. You know, very German in the way that the case has been done and the, the bracelet is kind of similar with the end links there. But the screws, I get what you're talking about. Uh, IWC engineer, George, very good. Very good thinking there. Funny, I don't think we, we have a few IWCs, do we? Yeah, we have a Portuguese. We don't have any engineers this time around. Al Primero 400 series. Thanks, that Raymond. And Duchette says, time for a shot. Okay, I'll take that challenge. I really only have a drop of whiskey tonight. I've got to be lucid. It literally is a drop. The Santa hits hard, so it's 43%. It's a little bit strong. 
Very 90s, Mark says. Yeah, I agree. Fully agree. Okay, more shots from Dan the Watchman. I love this. When do we see this? Now, this is probably the furthest from the sports watch lineup that we're going to be seeing, but uh, it's a JLC collection of his. And he didn't give me any reference numbers or details, but he, do, he did take some separate photos of the pieces that we'll have a look at now. I love it. These all feel very 50s, if I'm not wrong. Kind of late 40s, early 50s, I would say. But I just, I'm not saying JLC. It's a Le Coutre. You know, you're talking pre-JLC. Uh, the typeface is superb. Uh, this arrangement also, I mean, this speaks so true to the 1950s with the, the two, the four, the six. Very Seamaster based, very Le Coutre based, actually, when we see these, these pointed elements here. Great looking dial. But you notice the case kind of reminds you of a constellation. Has a very constellation sort of feel to it, you know? future matic 1950s raymond thank you Jeez, i tell you what you guys are the ones who save me half the time with these descriptions um thank you for that raymond and the variations yeah definitely so that's the first thing i notice extremely 50s uh i don't understand what this is is this the power reserve maybe it is the power reserve interesting little scale you don't see that often with a red highlight on the inside there um so Focusing in on the case, I see Constellation, which looks awesome. Very 50s. And as we move along to the next model, Chrono, I have no idea what it is, miles per hour. So it's attacking meter. So I would imagine it is also in the, in the realms of 1950s design. And you can generally tell that because the attacking meter is inset around the dial there. I love the Dauphine hands. Yeah, I agree, David. It looks so good. Something about the Dauphine hand. It's a pity that it's not featured more on watches today. Don't you find it funny how, um, geez, squeaky chair, I've tried all the oils, all the lubricants, still doesn't work. Uh, I think I mentioned this in the Seiko video that's coming out next week. Don't you find it funny how with some watches you can really struggle to like it because there's one key feature about it that just doesn't sit right with you, whether it's the handset, the case style, and then that just turns the watch off completely, you know? Uh, that's how I've felt with a lot of Seiko divers. That's I'm going to be talking about bloody Seiko for the next week. Sorry about that. Uh, we're so on point, Hans. Yeah, it's good. We're having we're having fun, just chatting away. The, the whiskey, the coffees hit the brain fully. I see uh, Demetrius has just joined us. Demetrius, you're coming up in a moment, and he has sent his collection for us to look at, and it's a stunningly cool collection. So we'll have a good time there. Why don't they use kilometers? Oh no, uh, interest. That's a good question. Now, look, I'm from the Southern Hemisphere where kilometers is the deal. I'm imagining this is a European-based watch, so miles is... No, but in Europe, they also discuss, is it made for the American markets? I really don't know. I really don't know. I would imagine European watches should calculate kilometers. It doesn't matter, though. Uh, the tachymeter scale, you can use it either kilometers or miles. Whether it's a kilometer you're measuring or a mile, I think the feature still works the same, uh, traveling the distance. But again, it's such a useless feature. You can also use it for the sake of if you're unloading a truck or doing something that requires a lot of repetition. Say you're, at, you're packing a box and it takes you up until 250. You know that over the course of an hour, you'll be able to pack 250 boxes if you time it. American market one, Raymond. I don't know how I guessed that one. Right, carrying on through the last submission. And this is another, oh, this is beautiful. This really is beautiful. Now, we, I've said this like 60 times already. I'm sure you're sick and tired of me saying it, but the 50s was very much a, a 30s Art Deco resurgence. I think we've actually featured this exact watch during the, during the show before. But look how they've actually carved out the elements. I'd imagine it's a brass dial, but they've carved out these negatives of the plots. It looks so good. It's kind of like a sector dial, but it's not, you know? And the way you can tell that this is just a typical 30s resurgence is when we look at the lugs. It's so charming. A small seconds as well. Very Calatrava. I mean, it has all the hallmarks of what you would see from a Calatrava. Think about it. Double batons at 12. That sub-seconds dial, I believe, looks exactly the same. I don't think we have any 5196s to feature. But uh, yeah, you can see those similarities there. Very clean. Very, very clean. Uh, and I'm <laughs> timing my bathroom breaks, Sam Ray. <laughs> that is the best comment I've seen tonight. That is so, so good. I love it. Uh, and Vintage Boy is joining us. Welcome. Crosshair. What are your thoughts on the crosshair, by the way? Is that the best execution? I don't know. It's, it's so 
so old fashioned in this area, right? We're so used to now seeing a subdial being fully, fully arranged. It feels very Paul Rout esque. That's all a part of the times, you know, the 1950s there. Last submission from Dan the Watchman. We were just talking about constellation cases. And here is an example of a constellation on a beads of rice bracelet. And again, you can see that this is just, I also feel like this is 1950s. We've looked at so many. I mean, I did a video all about the history of the constellation, and there was a lot to take in. I feel like this is also a late 50s model with these lugs. Beads of rice bracelet is amazing. Um, in the collection video brought out yesterday that I spent way too much time preparing, I mentioned how you can just change up a watch and your relationship with it just by changing out the straps, changing out the bracelets. And there's just so much you can do to reignite the passion with the watch. I see Les is joining us. Welcome. And, and Mezzanine saying better late than never. God, I'll tell you. We've been running now for, uh, looks like my, my streaming thing is broken. 36 minutes. It's been like 47 minutes. And I'm hitting the first fisherman's friend in my magic tin. <laughs> cherry flavor. Let's hope it's cherry. I still have some residual black currants left behind, which aren't the best. Okay, this is cherry. We're in good shape. Awesome watch, though, Bruce. It really is a classic. Uh, there's so many things to appreciate about the constellation, and we will be seeing one a little bit later. Right, moving to Diego. Dan, thank you for sending these in here. And, and Thomas says beautiful beads of rice. You're a bit biased, though, right, Thomas? You love your beads of rice bracelets. Yeah, they're great. They are stunning. All right, the first Oyster Perpetual. This comes in from Diego. Don't know where you're based, Diego, but it's nice. We're going to see quite a few cityscapes, actually, during the show, which is fun. And the Oyster Perpetual, God, the amount of time I've spent looking up Oyster Perpetuals over the last like two months. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, not just the new releases, but all the old ones. And uh, this is 36. Oh, do you, uh, is it? What's oh, 34? It might be 34, but then it might be a part of the Air King line, but it's not. Uh, this is probably the closest you can get to the Explorer aesthetic without paying a fortune to get one. And they're still out there. They're still around. I see Tim joining us. <laughs> and Clive, black currents matter. Oh, man, I love you, Clive. Clive, your, your humor is just always there, always on point. I don't know how you do it, man. I really don't. Is there some kind of pill you can take to get that kind of humor out? No idea. Black currents matter. Thanks, Clive. I see Tim is joining us. Absolute pleasure having you here, Tim. Welcome. Looks 34. Thank you, George. So this is the 34 mil model. It's probably the, you know, in this category, one of the most underappreciated, but also the sizes of these cases wear larger than you think. Can tell you that from uh, experience. And Tim says Clive's an attorney. Yeah. It's a one trip. Yes, it is. Thanks, Clive. So it's a one six triple zero, right? Or it's a one one six triple zero, something like that. Uh, Hans saying 50 guitars. Oh, God. What are we talking about guitars for? Let's not do that. Uh, blue dials is awesome. I think the pencil hands really complete this. In fact, this is very much like a Rolex Commander in many ways. The Commander has a fascinating history where it was made for like JC Penny or Abercrombie and Fitch or something. I can't, I don't remember the full. Oh, that's so funny. It was sold in a catalog. It was the cheapest in Rolex's line and it used this arrangement. Uh, with the coronet at the 12 and the pencil hands. So if you want a uh, a take on the commando, I think it was also 34 mils. Just think of it now. It's so funny. Awesome shot, though. I love seeing a full wrist exposure with a bit of sleeve. Uh, there was a joke made the other time about uh, the best submissions are generally they have some kind of foliage in the background, bit of sleeve, bit of watch. This, is, this works pretty well as a contender. I think this is a 34. You guys are right. Thank you, everyone, for uh, sending these in, for, for giving me the help, should I say. Okay, moving on to Demetrius. Now, this was quite out of the blue, a nice surprise from Demetrius. I really appreciate the effort getting this collage put together. It's a pain in the naught. I know that from experience. He sends in his selection of watches in his collection. Now, he didn't give me the full, the full name, and Hans mentioning it looks bigger. I promise you, the 34 mil case, it's much, much more squared off, wears more squat on the wrist. Doesn't in the modern size, should I say? The vintage 34s feel vintage, but the modern cases, what they've done is pretty outstanding. Uh, you don't notice that difference much, and at least at first, should I say? Okay, Demetrius, don't even know where to start, but we can just ogle on these pieces. You love your A384. Demetrius is based in Greece, and he sends in some awesome stuff for us to look at. But now we get to see the selection in full. 
Now he loves his bracelets and straps. How nice is this? A racing strap with red stitching. This is just perfect. Absolutely perfect for Hoya. Just amazing. Okay, let's just peruse. This is the first, this is not the first El Primero we've seen if we're talking about movements, but uh, what an awesome model. Panda dial, A384. The newest one takes its inspirations primarily from the A386, I think, the uh, the Chronomaster Sport. But this is the real classic, the Gay Frere bracelets. Gem, 37 mils, probably wears larger. Uh, and of all of us here, I think Thomas loves that watch more than anyone. Caliber 11 variant with a crown offset. I love that strap. It just completes the watch so nicely. Uh, Speedmaster Professional. I don't want to look at any more of these for a while. I'm sick and tired of Speedmaster Professionals. It's it's just intense. Yes, Samurai, Breaking Bad. Uh, Jesse gives Walter a Monaco. And you do see it during the show. Yes, I agree. Yes, I do remember it. That was a long time ago. Huh? I wasn't even into watches back then when that happened. Uh, this this actual photo was used as a cover one week. Um, Hans mentioning, was it Hans? No, Orange Hand. This was a cover photo. I thought the white on, he knows his straps, Demetrius, clearly. Uh, moving on down, I think this is a Stover or a Damasco. It's difficult to tell, or a Laco, or a, there's so many variants. But it's a 40 mil Flieger, I think. Uh, this is one of his most treasured watches being a, he loves a Zenith. So. Zenith Pilot with a big date. You don't see these very often. Very Type 20, and I think he bought it to celebrate his son's birth, if I remember right. Because this, this was a while ago, a couple of weeks back when we featured this watch. Uh, Valeria saying, but I'm still saving for the Speedy. I really don't know. I would love, I would love to get one. The, the newest release, I think, is just such a nice refreshment uh, compared to the, the older models. But is it worth tra trading this, the 1860 one for the new model? Mm, don't think so. I don't think so. It's not that much of a leap. Um, the prices that they're going for, though, God. I do love looking at the gray market when these watches are released because they just go ballistic, and it's pretty entertaining. This is a Seagull 1963, I think. Uh, just another charmer. But this is only the first page. Hold on a second. We're not done. It is. Oh, thanks, Demetrius. So it is your son's birthday watch. As far as a selection of chronographs go, I just want to avoid the bottom row. I think this top row is just awesome. You know what? This is one thing that I love. Collecting video, I also discussed this, that it's so special being able to look into a brand and find the watch that epitomizes the brand. Here you have the representation of Zenith, El Primero, the first. It's competition right next to it. This is the first, one of the first automatic chronos from Hoya. How cool is that? Now you just need the Seiko variant. And uh, the, speed, the, the, speed, the Speedmaster, just another clean, concise winner. Next collage. Oh, God. Now we've got uh, some more Amigas, Aquaterra's, a Bulgari, Octo Finissimo, some Young Hans. In no order. He loves, uh, he loves his mesh bracelets. This watch is often on the mesh. It's just so good. It's a really nice selection of stuff. I don't think we need to make these collection reviews uh, often because it does chow up the time, but I think it's worth seeing. This was one of his most recent pickups. We were chatting about the blue dial on the Octo and being Bulgari was, was established by a, a Greek gentleman. Uh, it just works so well. Blue and, and silver works nicely with the Greek flag and all that. I love it. Uh, it's a controversial watch for sure. I do love the controversy around it. The Lambda is sweet. We'll have a look at it now. Uh, classic Aquaterra. This is one of the first gens with the blued hands and everything there. Then down to a date just. He's not a fan of Rolex, if I remember right. He did mention this, that he's not a big fan of Rolex, but the date just for him is just just a gem, a real charmer. Um, the one from Iron Man, Samurai. What does he wear in Iron Man? It's, yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head. He does wear a Bulgari, but it's, it's the fully engraved bezel, isn't it? I don't know the model. Now, this, this Nomos is quite special. I, what is the reference called again? The Lambda, that's it. It's got an 84-hour power reserve, I think, if I remember right, reading. Yeah, 84-hour power reserve. The hands are just so typical of the Bauhaus design, and there's there's many things to appreciate about balance. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much here. Young Hans, I think this is one of his first watch in this category. Uh, Max Bill, charming piece, a real character piece of its time. And for many, this is a first watch that gets them into the hobby. And I think, who was one of the guys? Gary Steingart, I think, mentioned that, that the Young Hans was his first that got him into the space. And it's pretty incredible. So another selection. I love the Octo. It just stands out so, so nicely. Not done yet. Got a few more. Got a G-Shark. Got to have a G-Shark in there. 
Smiths, I think this is the 40 mil. I'm a big proponent of these. They are awesome watches, would highly recommend. This is a Nanos or Hamos or, or me and micro brands. Do love the arrangement though. I've got to motor through these. I've been chatting way too long. Small accent here. Look how they've actually loomed the, uh, the running seconds. Full steel G-Shock, yeah. Edward Bueller. This is a jump hour. That's pretty special. We have featured this before on the show before. And a Venus super classic, classic piece from back in the day. And a Seiko Lordmatic. Is this one of the first automatic Seikos in this category? I, God, don't even get me started. There's just too much to go through in one space. Ianos, okay. It's a, the only Greek watch. That's a Greek micro brand on the right-hand side. Really cool selection. And I've chatted about this for like 15 minutes. And uh, we're about to hit the first hour of the show. Good God. What are we going to do? Sorry, guys, I'm missing you all in the chats, as I normally do. And Mark says, I feel this is going to be a long night. My wife has gone to bed and given up. Oh, I could have put her to sleep, Mark. That's generally what I do. Uh, yeah, I feel like it might be. I have to, I've had to like, kick out a lot of pieces, just duplicates, you know, just to save us on time. There's only like, there's only like 128. It's pretty standard at the end of the day. It's just naming and categorizing these things that take the most amount of time. Uh, but Demetrius... Got to say, this collage, I call it collage. I don't know why. Maybe it was collection. I don't know. Uh, I think this selection is just really interesting because it's it's so all over the place. It's nice seeing appreciation for not only micro brands, but the G-Shocks, Jump Hours. And then you got some Seamasters. you got a high-end Horterology piece as well as very German aesthetic pieces as well. And then we jump to the Chronos. This top row just sings. I think it's amazing. Watches that epitomize their respective brands. Okay, Demetrius, thank you. We're jumping to Dr. Bob next. He was in the chat earlier. I might have put him to sleep by now. But he has sent in before, he has sent in a family set. And this is a Christmas set. That's how far behind we are. Taken by the tree. A 36 mil OP, I believe. And another polar. I thought, I thought we only had like two left. This is another example of the Polar Explorer. Yeah, Ed saying fantastic, very collection. I agree fully. <laughs> Tiffany Dahl, yep. So we can talk about this for a while now, I think. Uh, and speaking of which, this is not the only OP that we're going to be having a look at in the new format, the new arrangement. We are going to see some great ones from Juan if he is with us. I think he joins in a little bit later. So Tiffany Dahl, I think, is... Some have mentioned, I, I do like the perspectives on this. I haven't had any hands on time or seen it in person, but the perspectives so far is some feel it's more of a feminine color. Uh, the blue is just too bright for, for us. Maybe it is relative to our skin tones. It works better on some skin tones next to others. Um, interesting, though. Technically, it's not a Tiffany blue, though. The colors are vastly different. Still, there's a lot to take in. And another 42 mil polar. Sorry to say, Dr. Bob, but we've seen those already. And there's going to be more coming up coming up later. It's, it's so funny, I tell you. These shows, sometimes we get five, six, seven of the same watches in the submissions, which is just hilarious. Uh, Rasmus saying, better late than never. You're not late. It's only been like, what, 59 minutes, 58 minutes so far. <laughs> uh, and Tom says, yes, Rolex calls it turquoise. Yeah. So we're going to see a very nice selection of 41s just now. Uh, but first to Ed, who sends in a 41 date just. Uh, and Ed was just in the chat a second ago. I love it. I love it. The variety is just just here. Uh, so we do have this, this element of Rolex peppered through this entire show. Sometimes we never feature Rolex on these, but it seems like Rolex was just popular over the course of the last few months. Okay, so Dr. Bob, I don't know if you're still with us, but do like seeing his and hers. And this is not the only selection we're going to see. Later on, we'll see some more. And I think Dr. Bob also sent in the, Aqua, the Aquanaut and the, uh, the ladies Calatrava the other week. And that was a standout. Secondhand synchronization. You know watch enthusiasts. That's great either. Who mentioned that? Perry. You know you're a watch enthusiast when you're that focused in on the details. I love it. Funny, uh, the, the three watch video that I did of looking at the Tudor, the Omega, and the, uh, the Rolex, I synchronized them all at the same time. And it was so satisfying filming that that B-roll footage of all three of them ticking in in, numer in, numerous, in unison. That's the word. Dr. Bob, thank you for sending this in. Do love it. 
do do love it. Uh, moving to Ed with his day just 41. Uh, so Rasmus saying, uh, well, Adiga, you being all nervous about the sound settings and stuff is a pleasure. Oh, don't tell me. I'm being nervous about the sound setting. Oh, at the beginning of the show. Uh, yeah, generally, I hope the sound is good. I haven't asked you guys enough if the sound is okay, if I'm breaking up or anything. <sighs> tell you. There's just no knowing. There's no feedback for me to know whether or not I'm just speaking into the space or if someone's hearing me. Uh, Hans saying double fisting. Yep, yep. And a cheese board. Okay, so date just 41. Gorgeous watch, blue dial, very clean. My my ideal look at the date just is always one with a fluted bezel. Does it sound good? Okay, thank you. Nick and Sam Ray. Uh, is this live outtakes, Eric Bell? That's just rude. Oh, God. I do love the outtakes and recordings. They're just they're so funny, I tell you. Most of the time it's profanity and it, it wouldn't work. But sometimes they are pretty good. There are some hidden gems. I mentioned ovaries in the next video, so that should be a good time. Date just 41, Jubilee bracelet. The smooth bezel does dress it down a lot more. Sadly, with the larger scale models in this space, in the in the Rolex space, they, the fluted bezels do get a little bit heavy. They do bling up a little bit too much. Something so charming about the 36 bezel and just the vintage bezels with the fluting back then was it was subtle enough that it kind of went under the yeah Hans ovaries. I, I instead of saying overly, I say ovaries, and it's it's pretty good, pretty pretty good. Tongue twisters, you know, you run out of oxygen in the room when you're recording. Right, Ed, thanks for this. I did see you in the chat a second ago. Um, to Evan next, and you won't believe what's coming up. Another Explorer too. This one being the five-digit reference from 1991. And uh, do love the olive strap. I feel like this is a Bark and Jack olive strap. Now these are, they're really clean. Got to say, these five-digit Explorer 2s, they have just skyrocketed. People want them like crazy, like absolute crazy. And uh, this arrangement's great. Easy wearability. Um, glad I didn't send mine in, George. Yeah, we have so many of them, actually. It's it's funny sitting back and just looking at all of these selections again. You don't realize until uh, until you're presenting that there's so many duplicates, but it's it's good fun. Uh, someone's going to make an ID guy AI one day. I'm sure they will. There's so much voice recording on these shows that you could probably get the full English language in one sitting, a full dictionary's worth, you know, <laughs> ovary and art. Mark, it's good. It's very good. So the 16570, as Nick mentions, I should have mentioned the reference. They are awesome watches. I got some hands-on time with one for Christmas. They are great. They really are nice. Solid end link bracelets. Excellent. Be afraid. The Explorer 2 bezel will not turn. No clicky goodness, uh, unfortunately. But the, the functionality is there. It's very, it's very like, I don't know, mill spec inspired in a way. You only have the GMT hand to set for its function. The bezel is set. And it's a watch that deserves to see age and wear and, and use, you know? Okay, I've got to carry on. I'm going to be discussing these watches for ages. Fahim, I don't know if you're with us, but you did send these in right at the cutoff time. And uh, I had to feature this because he has been spamming the hell out of this watch on Instagram. And I want to feature his, uh, his handle in the chat. Let's see, like I said, this is not the only overseas we'll be looking at. Um, so King Flume, if you're on Instagram, follow this man. I hope I spelled that right. Yes, I did. Follow this man on Instagram because he takes incredible shots, I believe, with an iPhone. And he has an awesome collection. He's a fellow South African, so I have to give him all the love. And this is not the only South African who's sending in a shot, which is great. We don't see this watch loomed up normally. It's so funny because we we see these watches often now. We've uh, Juan sends in his overseas very often. Uh, but it's just great seeing a fresh take, different color arrangement. So we have to congratulate Fahim, if you are with us, uh, for picking up this watch this week, I believe. Um, yeah, just just awesome. Now guys are talking about height in the chat. 510 is considered short nowadays. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, I don't even, what is the average world height? Can someone put that in the chat? I'd be very interested in knowing. I'd imagine it's for, for men and women. I'd be very interested. Uh, Mr. JJ, yeah, it's gorgeous. It is really, really gorgeous. Don't worry, we're not done yet. I saved three of his shots and one final shot for the end of the show to be featured next to Russell if he joins us. Russell tends to always come up last at the end there. Steve, I saw, I'm sold on this VC. Yeah, it's 
I've, I've been speaking about this watch for like two years now, I think, saying how underrated it is and how people should be looking at it. The Gen 3 just hit it out of the park. And I believe they're waiting lists for these now. And yeah, it's very, it's it's sad in a way because it's, you know, the secret's out and they're hard to find and they're not cheap by any means. But as far as a one and done in the horterology space, this is pretty good. It's not the size of the and, but the size of the self-worth. Yeah. I agree, but talking about height and people and yeah, size of self-worth. Height height really means zip at the end of the day. I mean, you can be the shortest person on the planet, but it's all to do with confidence. Confidence and character is what is what wins. Uh, very expensive. It is, Mark. It's crazy expensive. And you guys are talking about I'm 6'5", six, 6'9". Six, oh, God. Now we're going realistic. Brent, welcome to the show. Some more shots. Of course, we can appreciate the movement. Again, get on Instagram and follow King Flume. I featured it in the chat for you to look at. You have to follow his page. He's got some great stuff. He puts so much effort into his photography that it just deserves, he deserves it. Um, yeah, beautiful. I, I think the rotor on this watch especially just completes it, you know. In a way, I'd prefer to see the Maltese cross. One thing I love about AP and the way they do their rotors is uh, the way they integrate the the skeletonized effect it'd be so nice to see the same with the maltese cross on this arrangement skeletonized i mean the maltese cross is just featured here at the base but i love it awesome arrangement the way you can just release the strap by pulling these these pins out so i say buttons on either side very functional easy to use and of course we can't feature a watch during wrist shot week uh, without seeing it on the wrist and uh did i just botch my very own show. That's so good. Okay. Hitting the water. Got to clean the throat. So men is 176. That's the average Elio. Amazing. And women is uh, 163. Wow. That's a pretty decent average height then. That's crazy. I mean, I was thinking, yeah, I would think, I was thinking it'd be much shorter than that, actually, uh, overall. Curve bridges, love it. Yeah, we can talk about the movement for days. This shot is just beautiful, though. <laughs> Wristwatch, Neferion, I knew it'd be there. Uh, the lighting, the way this dial is captured, it's gorgeous. It's it's a royal blue. In the purest sense, it's a royal blue, and it looks so clean. Um, I need to refresh the stream on my laptop. Hold on a second. I'll be with you in a moment. Uh, some reason, the laptop is chugging along very slowly today. It is a charming watch, and... Uh, I mean, this is a real hero shot for the show, don't you think? Fahim, where are you? This is bad that you're not here with us. Uh, so we're gushing over this. Uh, crush her and her lisp. I don't know what's going on, Mark, but it's so funny. Uh, yeah, and mentioned that, but, but mentioning sold my Panerai, bought an Amiga Seamaster 300. Yeah, I mean, I want to make a video all about the, the PAM line and how they could refresh. Thomas Thomas really hates this watch, but I think the ID watch that they made in partnership with Philips was quite the outstanding piece, and I would love to see that further evolved. There's just something so retro-modern about how they did it. Okay, we could sit and look at this watch for hours, so I'm going to move away from it. It's just, yeah, it's just awesome. Apparently the same as the chronometer. Interesting, Richard. He mentions that this is the same dial as the chronometer blue. I can fully see that, fully see that. Question, would you rather have this dial or the chronometer blue? I love this color. It's royal blue probably sums it up the best. I think I think that's the cleanest way. B Dev saying, try saying Irish. Oh my gosh. Irish wristwatch. Iris <laughs> that didn't work. I love it. Irish wristwatch. If I say it slowly. Uh Fahim, thank you for sending this in. You're a gent. It's beautiful. This watch unfortunately is out in the wild and everyone loves it now a couple of years back no one was interested because everyone was going for the, the royal oak and for the nautilus now the nautilus has been discontinued and there's rumors that they're bringing out one in titanium they're calling it like the 6711 i think and they're bringing out one in platinum updated movement updated micro extension on the clasp if anyone would like to do a video about that by all means uh okay okay moving next to george George sends in, this is such an awesome photo as well, Louis Vuitton in the background, and a Blancpain, I'm going to get this right, the Ocean Commitment model. I think this is the only 50 fathoms we're going to be featuring. But again, we've got a blue dial. Uh, it's, it's a gem. One of the most outstanding watches I've seen this over the course of the last few months is the Hodinkee Mil-Spec 
limited edition that they did in partnership with Long Pond. Oh, Dimitri says overseas Royal Oak. Ooh. Honestly, I would take the Royal Oak just because they're so different though. The overseas I love because it's it's on its own kind of plane. It has its own approach. It's I've said this in the overseas video that it manages to do so much after three generations, it's managed to finally make a watch that really stands shoulder to shoulder with two pieces, the Nautilus and the Royal Oak, that have been around since the 70s. It's quite a statement when a watch can define its own its own route. The reason why I would take the Royal Oak is simply because I have this love and hate relationship with it that I think would make it such an interesting piece. Some days I'd, I'd love to wear it, other days I wouldn't. And it's that polarizing thing that would probably keep me coming back to the watch a lot more. As far as value for money goes though, I would say I'd rather pick the, the Vacheron just for if you when it comes to wearing the watch, I think the Vacheron is pretty good value for money. I don't know what they're trading for though. So uh, it's difficult. Good comments though. And then mentioning about the, the 40 mil. I agree. I think this is 40 mil, if I'm not wrong. Forget about it. <laughs> uh, the chats are good. Uh, so tag me in the chat again if you like, uh, like my attention. I struggle. So the chats are just going ballistic. Everyone's debating Royal Oak and Nautilus. And uh, what about the Nautilus? That was left aside completely. I love it. Neither Blanc nor Payne. <laughs> Shane, I love it. Yeah, so the one watch that's really stood out to me, and I've decided to make a video all about the Hodinkee limited piece, is that new mil-spec model that's fully brushed and it's 40 mil, and it just does it all. Why doesn't Blanc Pond make that a standard in their lineup? I don't know. <sighs> I like my attention. You like my attention to ferry on. That's so funny. Okay. George, love it. Do love this arrangement. The photograph is also incredible. Some of you guys just go above and beyond with these arrangements. Next to George. I don't know if this is the same George. Might be a different one. But we have a Reverso Duo Face. Is this the only? This is the only Reverso Duo Face. We're talking about sports watches. Can't really go wrong with this. Um, so Forbin's saying, is the blanc Pond bezel insert under layers of clear coating? As far as I know, it's a sapphire cap. And that's one of their selling points, even though micro brands now sapphire cap their bezels. Uh, it, and I love it because it makes it look like it's Bakelite. The, the way it reflects, the way it works, kind of feels like it's got this plastic effect to it. But uh, Bakelite, of course, is absolutely useless material for bezels. Uh, sapphire capping does have its pros and its cons. I've never seen a sapphire bezel crack. It would be good, though, to see uh, that. The whole idea was for them to try and emulate the, the 50 Fathoms arrangement as good as possible and you know, to bring back the vintage charm. Sapphire capping is their, uh, their approach. So the reverse, this model in particular, the Reverso Duo Face with the blue dial, is a real outstanding model. And we are going to look at the back in a moment. Ugh, it's great. Dauphine hands. I much prefer the reversos without the numerals on the dial. Maybe that's just me. Something so nice about the way the batons are me done here. Funny, I would also like to see the reverso with Romans. Have, have uh, reversos ever been produced with Roman numerals on the dial before? I'd be very interested in knowing that. Uh, and I see Fahim is with us. Good to have you here, Fahim. You missed out on your, uh, your watch a second ago. We were just chatting about your Vacheron. It's absolutely gorgeous. Congratulations again, man. Really, it's so. Thank you for sending it in. It's one of your la one of the last submissions that came into the show. And John, thank you for the super chat. Really, thank you. Thank you all for being here. That there's over two hundred of you watching. Absolute pleasure. We're by no means done with the selection of pieces. There's so much coming up. It's insane. Great variety, as we will see in a moment. So this is the blue face. We sw switch over to the silver face, though, and then we get to appreciate it even more. Now, how is this? Wearing a reverso out in the rain. Talk about being brave. Most in this space wouldn't be doing that. And I think uh, it's pretty charming. Look at the way they finish that dial. Mm, it's so, so cool. The reverso is just such, such a charming model. It really is. Um, okay. Uh, missing you. There's, there's chat about Purdy haircuts. And Demetrius, thank you for, for the super chat. Uh, Robert is wise to study his fretboard. We're we talking about fretboards. What the hell is going on? I'm missing you all and whatever you're chatting about. I love it. The debates are great. There was mention in the chat about the 50 Fathoms being a grail. It most definitely could be a dive watch grail in my, in my mind too. I think for me, I would love it. It's just something so special. I think the mil specs, especially on a NATO strap, just absolute killer. The 40 mil size would suit me down to the ground. Richard mentioning a beautiful watch. It is something else. 
these these duo faces they are quite they are premium in this category if i'm not wrong they are one of the most expensive in the zone purely because of the complication and everything there but you're getting two watches in one space and i just love it a day night indicator 24 hour time two separate time zones set the way i addressed it i funny i stumbled onto my old reverso video from like two years ago and uh, in it i said it's amazing when a brand can take the chassis of a watch like this and just chuck it full of complications as well as keeping it as simple as possible there's some you know from the beginning to the end it's the same case the same style but it's just the complication that keeps evolving it's so difficult to do in this format especially i mean we're talking about a little rectangle here and uh yeah reverso is a watch that's on my radar too the tribute to 31 i agree tom is beautiful look it up if you don't know what it is tribute to 1931 is an absolute gem one of the best um it's, it's an also an ultra thin if i'm not wrong okay uh george thank you for these we're jumping next to gunter and how's this pam 560 i think this is the only panerai <laughs> we're going to be featuring but uh, i need to do a video about it there was a question um derek asking again if you'd like to ask me a question tag me at id guy or the hashtag in the chat and i'll be able to see it faster um thoughts on the date just with the wimbledon dial is this going out in 2021 it's been around for a long time. I think it came out in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I can't say I'm a fan of it, really, with the Romans. That so it's it's the green the green Romans with uh, the separate baton at the nine and the date at the at the fifteen at the three. It's a nice. I think as far as an out, outstanding watch in the category, it does have its own quirks, which I think is cool. It's seeing that the standard atypical date just it's nice to see some variety in that space if it was me going for the the limited editions in the space there was one awesome rolex that was introduced for the masters i think it was a day date it was a white gold day date with a green dial with romans i think it's just stunning was it a white gold? someone correct me the masters i don't know what they call it but it was like the masters day date absolutely beautiful if there is if there is belief that this uh, Wimbledon dial is going out, then by all means grab it up. Same as the um, testosterone. Oh, this is going to be good. Uh, same as the the Air King, the, the old Air King that's now probably also going to be phased out with the Flieger dial. I recommend picking that up. Jump on the outliers if you can. Uh, yeah, yeah. So hold on a sec. I'm just gonna, it was there full moon that night. It's an awesome shot. I don't know if uh, if Gunter is with us. He goes by the name Urzuna in the in the chat. But uh, Wolverine wearing fan I mean, it's awesome, right? It's real. It's it's a real working man's watch, and of course, you got to enjoy the loom shot. Uh, yeah, I just went on a diatribe talking about date just. Um, Fahim was playing catch up for a bit, but joined late. <laughs> but one love, bro. Pleasure having you here, Fahim. Really, absolute pleasure having you here. It's so good. Um, this guy has more hairs on his little finger than I have on my chest. It's awesome, right? It's funny, I was thinking about arm hair the other day and how we all just differ so much in the space. And you know how some of us just think about arm hair sometimes? It's so cool. It's so weird how ge genetics works around the world. This watch is probably like 45 mils in size. I think Thomas could probably probably help. But what a monster of a watch. It's, it's clean. It's an eight-day power reserve. There's lots to appreciate around Panerai. Okay, Gunter, thanks for sending this in. It's just the cleanest, simplest in this category. You've got to love it. It has all the hallmarks that makes the Panerai what it is. Next up, we're jumping to High Desert Forester, and we're getting to another Seiko. I've never seen this before. It's called the Land Master. <laughs> so it's the SBD, <clears throat> SBDB015. Being someone who owns a Seiko now, I should... Uh, I should know these references off pat, but I never will. I will never understand Seiko references as long as I live, as much as I try. It's going to be a serious headache. Uh, so as you've been saying, any wrist shots with the Zenith Alpha Mirror? No, sadly not. It's No one has it in their possession that's sent in for the show. But um, funny, I saw some release photos of the watch with batons the other way around. There, there was like a, a manufacturing glitch where one of the batons, the loom, was placed the other way. Uh, but the, the new Zenith, we will definitely, I'm going to do a video about it for next week so we can talk about that in a lot more detail. Okay. Uh, never seen this before. It's so peculiar. The big crown at the top. Now it's a spring drive. It's probably one of the first spring drives in the space. 
and it's a it's like it reminds me of an engineer in a way very engineer aesthetic this is the thing about seiko is that their identity though similar in some spaces also just decides to go all over the show sometimes and this is an example of a watch that's just you just don't know is this a gmt does it have 20 it does have a 24 i don't know 20 it is a gmt of some kind but it's a string drive so it has the, the full and the empty reserve standard data you would expect Seiko has such a varied design language in this space, so it's well worth exploring because there's a lot to take in. And like I said, you can become a master of one brand and still be surprised. And this is an example. So it's a GMT with a spring drive movement, and it looks like it looks like a compass in a way on the wrist, right? Very old-fashioned, kind of like a pilot-style model. It's very difficult to to hone in on what it is. This is a new TC. Very good point, Tom. Uh, what's the height of the monster? I would imagine it's probably like 15 mils, including the including the crystal that stands proud. Yeah, or for a refill, Hans says, and a and a leakage break. Go and uh, flush your kidneys, flush your bladder, shall I say? Right. Hi, Desert Forester. Thank you for sending this in. We are not done with spring drives. We are not done with Grand Seiko and other models. We will get to more of them just now. Next up to Indra, who sends in a Saab 033 by the fire. Again, these reference numbers, I just cannot. It's going to take so much time. I'm going to be diligent and try my utmost to learn references for Seikos, but uh, don't put your faith in me. <laughs> Rajiv is joining us. Absolute pleasure having you here. Thank you for being a part of the show. And uh, yeah, this is great. Just awesome. Titanium. I'm sure it must have been titanium. Um, so this, I mean, I, when I look at this, I think presage, but it's not presage. It's Saab. Does that mean it's the next level up or it's in the same kind of category? I oof. There's so many ranges within. Them. I'm going to be fumbling a lot with Seikos, as I always do. Dauphine hands is just typical Seiko format. You know, you can appreciate the batons and all of those arrangements. By the fire, it's a great shot. I love it. Nice to see some context with wrist shots. Always Saabaru. I like that buck. Uh, I think we're going to see an Alpinist later on, I think. I don't know. There's so many watches. Where to start? Right, Indra, thank you for sending this in. We are going to motor. I've still got like another oh God, 50. Oh, Jesus. So much still to go. Uh, we've been running the show now for an hour and 23, 22-ish minutes. Right. Next to Jason. And guess what's coming up next? A Black Bay. This being, this is a 41. Uh-oh. Magic Mouse. I need to get another one of these. Uh, my Magic Mouse is on the brink. This is a 41, I hope. It's a 41. I don't know what he's drinking. Uh, Johnny Black Label, I don't, know I don't know what he's drinking. But uh, really enjoy the strap. The strap is what stood out to me the best. I mean, we would expect to see this on a Flieger arrangement, you know, with the riveted ends uh, being stamped here. This is the strap we would expect on a Flieger watch. Seeing it on a diver, quite different. And I see Carlos from New Zealand. Welcome. And the rest of you who have joined in, thank you for, for being here. Um, I like Uptech Steel Marine Master. The Marine Masters are great. They also have some of the best clasps in this category. I mean, looking at an aftermarket Marine Master clasp, uh, 41. Okay, good, good. Uh, do dig it. I think the Flieger strap does kind of, when you, when you see this kind of watch out in the wild, you don't expect this arrangement. And it makes you kind of look at it twice and go, hmm, that's something. Um, 41. Okay, okay. So it's going well. The show has been going well. I've been chatting away. I can just talk over myself for God knows how long. Why do I imagine uh, Sean Connery wearing this watch, drinking whiskey on the side? Yeah, this is the kind of watch that he would be wearing, right? I mean, it's what it's modeled on, basically, the, the 58, the whole big crown style back in the day. It's not a combo you see. Whenever do you see a Flieger style strap on a dive watch? Got to say, though, the whole idea of a vintage leather strap on a diver is charming very very charming uh love it gotta say it's awesome and the 41s you can pick them up for absolute steals at the moment that's one thing to focus in on is that this year i hope to be a lot more varied with the content when looking i'm actually going to make a video all about things you should be focusing on in the watch space instead of just the typical where are the other areas that you should be looking at and in this category of Tudor, the 41s are not ones that are being looked at. The 58s are the most popular. So jump on a 41 if you can. They do have ETA movements, but even still, they are just great workhorses. They still fulfill the same purpose, you know? Um, Booker Bronze comes with a similar strap. Is that so? 
not with the rivets though, does it? But uh, the bronzes are cool. They do have the, the 369 at the quarters, if I remember right. Okay. Jason, I don't know if this is you next. Might be a different Jason because we do get multiples. Later on, we have a Thomas, a Tommy, and a Tom, I think, three separate submissions. How cool is this? Now, it is the El Primero 1969, a new vintage in 40 millimeters. Um, skeletonized dial. This is based on the aesthetics of the A384 that we know, but in a 40, 40 millimeter size, a bit better for the modern wearing. I don't know the story about this watch, when it was necessarily released, if it's newer or older next to the uh, the original. But uh, should I say the, the, the new release of the, uh, the 37 mils? But the PVD coating is very charming, and there's something about the whole shadow blackout effect that works. See what I mean about Zeniths? I mean, we've had like four of them already on the show, and we're not done yet. And this was not planned. None of us knew that there would be a release on uh, on Thursday <laughs> about the new El Primero. Um, hold on. So BDF saying that the 41 have they do have an in-house movement. I did not know that. Hold on a sec. You're right because the smiling self-winding models are the ones with the ETAs. Thanks for that, BDF. The movement is MT5602, if anyone out there. Thanks for that, b -Dev. That's really important to note. Only the ones with the smiling self-winding, if I'm not wrong, have the ETA-based calibers. And just before they transitioned out, I like that. Really nice. Uh, black on black. Skeletonized arrangement. I'd be very interested in knowing your thoughts around this. Some skeletons, they absolutely win. In other cases, they can kind of flop. This one... This one looks good. <laughs> Freddie's saying Zenith is the thinking man's Rolex. I mean, it's. I actually want to. Sp I haven't spoken about the the new release yet. I haven't sat and done the recording, but I do think that they're just in in those categories. They are a bit different. Where the Rolex is for brand, the Zenith you buy for movements. It's it is a thinking man's watch. I do agree. Acrylic crystal. I don't know, Buck. I'd imagine it's probably a domed sapphire for this kind of watch. It has an AR coating on it, so maybe it's not. Oops, magic mouse. Maybe it's not anti-reflective coating, but I believe it's a domed sapphire. They are in two different categories. I'm looking really looking forward to talking about this new El Primero release and what it can spell out for us in the space. But for sure, I mean, you buy Zenith these El Primeros for their movements and for the script. I mean, look at that can't see it very well it's kind of pixelated but just look how clean it looks yeah it's awesome these a384 cases just win we're not done with them yet though we're going to see some more later on okay moving next to j deep i think he's one of the f i think this is one of his first submissions that he's ever sent into the show and just an awesome planet ocean we don't often see this arrangement of the planet ocean with orange highlights there um jlc for movements hans i agree yeah for sure it's great. I mean, I, I love, I love the idea that while all the attention is in one area, you can just grab so much more. You can find so much more out there in these different categories. I mean, hell, talk about me and picking up a Seiko for the first time. Uh, looking at brands like JLC at Zenith, they are outliers. There still are brands that are not fully recognized or appreciated. And I just believe that as we gradually proceed, more and more people are going to jump on these brands because they're accessible. They are outstanding we talk about their movements the quality builds and everything there uh mark says i'm the, uh, the hardest working man in watch show business god that's funny i gotta say that the hours do tick by pretty quickly the preparation and all the stuff you know, when it comes to prepping these videos sometimes it does drain you these live shows for example i mean sunday i'm hungover it takes a good few hours of uh r and r and painkillers to to clear the head we also have another great shot, a close-up. Here's a better shot of seeing it in the light. Planet Oceans, they are also very underappreciated in this category. And sadly, it's probably the closest we're going to see.
Right. Wi-Fi is back on. I don't know if the show is still running. Let me know if you can hear me. I think we just had a huge Wi-Fi spike. Okay. Feels like a class without the teacher. Can anyone hear me? Can anyone see me? Is anything going on? Let me uh, get back out of this. I really hope we're still live. Are we still live? <laughs> God, that was fun. Uh, the, the trick is when you run in and these external things happen, don't panic. Awesome. You can hear me. Great. Okay. Uh, apparently, you know, it's like sub-zero outside and I'm sure there must have been a bit of a Wi-Fi glitch. Thank you, Virgin Media. Uh, hold on a second. We're still... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's awesome. You got to love it. It's all about keeping a cool head and minimize. All right. And back in. <sighs> For a moment, I thought, what is going to happen next? Okay, good. We're back in. Silent film. <laughs> Wi-Fi spike, solar flare. Apologies, ladies and gents. I have no idea what that was. Uh, don't start from the start. Should I, uh, should I go back to the top and begin again? Should we refresh the stream and then start all over? Right. Uh, it's good. That never normally happens, but we have been known to do these in the past. Planet Ocean, close up. Let's try and get the... It's the Grobbits. <laughs> uh, the Grobbit hole. We've reached too far. The rabbit hole, grabbit hole. Love it. Thanks for sticking around, guys. That's uh, something that never normally happens here, but uh, we, ex we're experiencing some cold temperatures outside, and I'm sure something must have bitten the cables. Or Got to say, this is a nice arrangement of colors. When do we ever see orange bezel with a white face, just white hands, white batons, everything. It's a really clean arrangement. It's not for everyone. If you're Dutch, you would love this watch. If you're someone who just digs the color orange and matches it with your clothes, it's good. Uh, back to talking about how good the Planet Ocean is. Yeah, Thomas, that was funny. You're not, the, you're not the only one with connection issues, Thomas. It seems to happen all the time. Thought you stole the watches and left. <laughs> Ah, asteroid strike. I love you guys. Thanks for sticking around. Sorry about that earlier. Okay, JD, thank you for sending these in. Absolutely awesome submission of this watch. I think it's 43 mils or it's hippie beads like that, Forbin. Uh, great piece, great presence on the wrist. Awesome looking sports model. Very underrated too. You can find these for absolute steals, gray markets, uh, eBay, wherever you, wherever you look. And they just offer so much. I mean, they're coaxials, 600 meter waters. They are just bulletproof in this category, I believe. And they do so many things right. You've got an applied logo, applied type. It's just, yeah. I gush about Omega often. It's no secret that I'm a fanboy. Okay, let's get to the big stuff. How about a Patek 5205G? Isn't it good that the show didn't cut out uh, completely? Um, from Jeffrey. I don't know if we've featured this before. Jeffrey, uh, but it is charming. Brent saying our oh, submissions allowed from everyone. No, no. Only if your name either starts, if your name is between A and Z, you can submit stuff. Otherwise, no. Uh, yeah, my descript, my uh, email's in the description. Send whatever you like, and I'll save it up for the next show. Uh, Brent, thanks for the question. Um, he's hiding the valve. I also thought so. Oh, no, it's funny, Hide, hiding it under the sleeve. Um, it's like the 2010 Seamaster Vancouver, Raymond. They have done just Omega with their limited editions and their models. They, they range them through every model line, not just the Speedmaster. Right, 5205G. There have been some awesome stories around this watch, and it comes in from Jeffrey. I don't know if you're watching here with us. But uh, there's a great story by, oh, what was the gent's name? Paul. I think it was Paul. He sent in this watch a while ago, and he basically traded a Hulk Submariner and bought this watch outright. I mean, this is a full on, I believe it's an annual, it's not a perpetual, I believe it's an annual calendar. Maybe I'm wrong. If someone knows your movements, you'll probably be able to help me out here, but just look at this machine. What a gorgeous shot. Evacuated lugs, there's just so much to appreciate here. The slate gray dial, it's just beautiful. I should also say that, uh, just come to mind now, if the stream does cut out again, then don't worry, I'm not leaving. It's just uh, something wrong with the signal. So if it might easily cut out again. Just bear with me. I'm just so glad that the show refreshed itself and started working again, you know? It's an annual calendar. Thank you, Raymond. Okay, so not perpetual still. I just, it's one of the most, I'm not a fan of how Patek arranges their windows in their watches. Sometimes they're hit and miss, but this to me, it's just so practical and logical. It's not in your face. It's not offensive. It doesn't break up the watch at all. You read it from left to right, and it just has it all there for you, you know? Charming. What a great trade. I love it. It's It's a past show. I think we did maybe 
two or three months back and it was the, the actual hero of the show it was one on the uh on the cover thomas that is beautiful towards the internet bill thank you thomas i need it hell teeth virgin media charges like over a hundred pounds uh oh come back charges over a hundred pounds for for internet speed here it's ridiculous uh 5205g absolute charmer one of my favorite in the sports dress category i just spoiled it by dropping in the the day date <sighs> tell you what it's great great watch and symmetry also mentioned by sam ray i fully agree They've done symmetry so right. Let's get another shot of the angle before we move on. Yeah, the evacuated lugs. I guess the one downside to these pieces is that many of them do have these pushes for adjusting the dates, but that's understandable because it is quite a complex piece. Um, so one thing you can really congratulate Rolex for is that their, their bezel functionality with the Sky Dweller, being able to arrange it all by the bezel and by the crown, hell of a feat of watchmaking. Yeah, awesome looking watch. These, these lugs in the case just sings. Okay, moving on to Jimmy, another his and hers Rolex collection. No idea how this worked out, but it did. Uh, he sent me a quite a long story about this, and I think he sent it in like quite late yesterday. So I've tried to summarize it as best as possible. Um, so here, yes, the subdial is 24 hours. 24 hours and a moon phase. Oops, come back. 24 hours and a moon phase, if I'm not wrong. Uh, it's just part of the complication. You don't necessarily need 24-hour time on a watch, but it just kind of completes it a bit nicer. Uh, I've never really understood how watches have a 24-hour arrangement. It's not like you're going to go uh, spelunking or cave exploring with this piece. Uh, unless you're held up in an interrogation room somewhere, uh, you don't really need to know 24-hour time on your dress watch, but hey, whatever. So, so let me try and get this right. These two watches were purchased for their 20th, 20th wedding anniversary. Okay, so we have a Yachtmaster, I don't have the reference, and we have a CHNR GMT. Now, the best thing of all is that this Yachtmaster, let me try and get this right. What did I say here? Out of pure chance, happenstance, his wife's Yachtmaster has her birthday on the warranty card. It was made exactly to the day she was born, or should I say that, yeah, on the day she was born, 2020, I think. And that is something, that's a one in a million thing, you know? So not only were these anniversary watches, but this, this yacht master of hers also has a birth date on it, which is great. I don't think it's 30. It looks a lot smaller though, hey? It does look like a smaller variant. Maybe it's just the, the angle of the photo, but there's mention of if it's a 37 woman's. I really couldn't tell you, Steve. As far as I, I didn't know that Rolex still made these smaller sized yacht masters. I thought that was more linked with the early 2000s. Maybe someone can help in the chat. But I, I do like that whole idea. 20th anniversary as well as birthday on top of it. Okay. Also just love the pairing. Blue Shirt says it is 30, 37. Nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. Going to jump on next to Juan. And I, yeah, this pairing is great. It's nice to see Rose Gold get some love in this category. Um, I think Rolex hit it out of the park with the CHNR. Would love, would love to experience this piece. Okay. To Juan. Our man Juan. I don't know where he is. I don't know if he's with us today, but he sent in the other week uh, his gorgeous platinum day date, and he got rid of all this, all the precious metal sports watches that he has, just to focus in on the more dressier watches with precious metal. And I think he traded in a it was that blue dial Daytona that we featured a couple of weeks back for this instead. Hell of a trade up from from white gold to platinum. Uh, and he did mention in the email that he wanted to capture the blue of the hands and of the dial just for everyone to see a bit better. And he is a stickler for these details, as we will see later on. It's it's an awesome looking watch. Very underrated. Understated too. You know, it's it's actually no, I wouldn't say understated. This thing does shine like absolute crazy. Yeah. He is the Juan. Yeah, he's awesome. And uh back I'm saying, yeah, talking about the, the watch watchmakers for can someone in the chat please explain the watchmakers for i think i'm going to absolutely i'll put you to sleep if i explain it again but uh, it's just and the way that i didn't realize how this dial separated into quarters you see how it has verticals on these ends and horizontals on the other love it very nice we're not done yet though we have some more i called this one day date in the bush and we can just see it a bit more playing in the light platinum has such such a vibrant color I'd love to see white gold next to platinum just to get that that uh, differentiation. But it's an awesome watch. 
Can someone please help me? Is it 40 mil or is it 36? I think it might be, th oh, I really don't know. I think it's a platinum 40, if I'm not wrong. It's not understated at all. No, Michael, I, I misspoke. It's definitely not understated. <laughs> it stands out like crazy, especially with the dial. Um, uh, yeah, if you're blas blasphemy, if you're Greek, bad for the, as, as Timagism. I don't know what that means, Raymond. Can you explain that? As Timagism. I don't know. Oh, a symmetry. To do with symmetry of some kind. It's a 40. Okay, good, good. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so it is a 40 mil, 40 mil platinum. It's the absolute, you know, it's the top echelon in the in the day-date sphere. And it's, yeah, it's a gem. There's still more, though, by the pool. I thought this was good. You can, you can see why he took this photo, just to capture the water there. And we're not done yet with Juan. We have a few more interesting new pieces included. And most of them are Rolexes. We're going to have a look at a nice uh, IWC in a second that we have never seen before, that we've never featured on the show. Watchmaker 4 hurts me. I dig it. I don't know why. I don't know why. It, it seems to affect a lot of people, though. Um, I guess if you're someone in the finance game or if you are someone who deals with numbers a lot or just is a stickler for those rules, I think the way they've balanced the symmetry between the 4 and the and the 8, charming. I really do like it. Maybe I am the, the outlier in this camp. But just squint your eyes and see the 10. Also notice that the 10 has this great looking cutaway the small little touches and features to this watch yeah it's nuts i mean the day date is not a watch for me personally it's not a watch that i would want to own it's, i'm not a fan of the day date complication in general but as far as not only a statement piece but very much the the epitome of dress sports in the rolex camp can't really get further from the day date it's kind of the the echelon did they make the platinum in 36, Andreas? I have no idea. Maybe someone can can point that out. I don't believe so. I think this was the first and only time that Rolex has ever made a platinum day date. And they put it in 40 mils. Someone, Cartier X, yes or no, I agree. Uh, 10, should I say. It's really charming. Okay, I've been speaking about this watch enough. We've got to keep on motoring. Uh, next from Juan, he sends in a shot of, how cool is this? Someone help me out. I'm guessing this is a Portuguese but I could be completely off. I've never seen a green dial like this on this model. Emerald green, beautiful machine. Absolutely beautiful machine. Emerald of the purest sense. Uh, yeah, Hugh Maestro sum it up pretty well there. Um, lover of the Eastern Arabic day date. Yeah, they're charming. Uh, Elsa Ban says, totally uh, agree. The distribution of the four and eight is superlative. I dig it. It's not for everyone. But there's something very, uh, it's just its just good on the eye. I think at the end of the day, it's just something that feels more appealing on the eye if you're not looking at them as numbers. You know what I mean? How nice is this green? I've never seen this color before. It is so vibrant. I can't remember his email that he mentioned to me. He's, he's not in the chat today, but he, uh, he mentioned that he picked it up at the AD and I think he got quite a discount for it. Of course, Nefarion would love it because he loves his green. And speaking of green, I need to hit some more of this whiskey before I completely run dry. IWC has a brand similar to Panerai. Lots of models that are underappreciated that do deserve to be looked at a lot more. It is Touristus. Thank you for this reference. So it's the, here we go. IW371615 Portuguese or chronograph. Awesome. Uh, and Blue Shirt mentioning that the platinum day date is only in 40. Thanks, Blue Shirt, for that. Juan is here now. Awesome. Well, you timed that perfectly, Juan. You can mention your story behind this watch to everyone. I forgot. I forgot to save it. Uh, I was just willy-nilly saving everything that you sent to me. But you mentioned something about picking it up at the AD for a, for a discount. Uh, Spitfire is your favorite IWC. Uh, Toby Moss. It's a nice watch. really is. Typical tribute to the Mark 11 and the Mark 12 and 15. And Okay. We have some more, though. Hold on a second. We have a gorgeous shot of the movement. Juan really does go above. I can tell you what, if, if I had to uh, give an award for participants, Juan, Juan takes one of the top spots. I think Russell also. Russell and Juan kind of compete neck and neck when it comes to being participants because they always send in watches for the shows and they always go above and beyond when it comes to taking the photographs, not just of the movements, but of the dials and different lights. It's I really appreciate it, man. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> it just makes such a great viewing experience for all of us to enjoy. Uh, and uh, I mean, I've only saved like six of the shots that he sent in, but he sends in like five of each watch. And I kind of have to cherry pick here and there, but uh, it's awesome. It really is awesome. Got to enjoy that movement. Okay. 
last shot of the watch in i love the foliage in the background as i think nefarion pointed out at one stage you need to have some foliage in the background to win to get a winning shot here we have green on green and we can appreciate such a nice color why don't more brand i mean i feel this is very moza with this this arrangement i feel uh i think one watch that comes to mind is the the moza mbnf collaboration they had a similar fume dial set up I love that color. It's, it's, it's an emerald that we do not see ever on a watch. And it really is the truest form of emerald on a piece. So Juan says, no discount except strap. Wow, strap was at the discount. That's so funny. <laughs> uh, and Zahira says, what is the case diameter of this? I would imagine it's probably 42 or 41. Okay, most of 41. Thanks for that. Um, opium fields. Love it, Tom. Green is the new blue, touristers. Yeah, and I think uh, burgundy will be the next green. And so it goes. I love it. Awesome watch. I think the balance is just there. We've spoken about the Portuguese quite often before. Okay, let's get to Rolex again and enjoy that. Oh, the cutaways. Yes, Buck. Very divisive. You know what? Why can't brands just put the extra element of the six in the subdial? Is that really going to perturb people? Honestly, is it going to bother someone with an extra bit of six there? And same with the 12. Uh, might. It might get in the way. But I like that idea. Imagine completing the subdials completely or completing the numerals and not necessarily damaging the arrangement. Uh, but they do some good stuff. Got to say, the balance between the arrangement, the Portuguese has an amazing history. Need to discuss it. Okay, moving to Rolex. Let's see. We have a shot of a new sub. This is the second new sub, the, the 1206. Here we go. The one two. What is it? One one four. So the one two four zero six zero. That's it. Got there eventually. It's funny how uh, reference numbers change. And yeah, I would totally pick up one of these given the chance. I said in the beginning of the show, it would be nice to get this as the one and done. Get out of the hobby or get out of the Rolex hobby, should I say? Uh, the Rolex side of things. No hand clearance. The best new sub so far. There are a few divisive things that I've noticed comparing this to the the original. I prefer the crown guards on the supercase. I think they've reduced the crown guards quite a lot on this model, and it makes the crown really poke out a lot. Uh, maybe it's just my pedantic eye. We have a few more shots. This is probably the best shot of the sub that we're going to see. How beautiful is that? Juan, you're a legend for sending this in. I mean, this is cover photo material here. So as far as I know, not only has the case been tapered, but the actual crown guards themselves used to be much more squared off. And somehow I feel like the crown protrudes a little bit more than what it should. I wish there was a bit more material on the crown guard, but otherwise, everything else has just been catered for. I, I really look forward to experiencing the 21 mil bracelet and the width of the clasp. It's one thing I've criticized, uh, especially on the, the Explorer 39. I really wanted a, a wider bracelet. Maybe that's just coming from an Omega background where nothing really tapers with most of their models. It would be good to see. I think it's an 18 mil clasp too. Yeah, awesome. Really nice looking arrangement. I mean, we've seen this watch so often before. It's like, it's chalk and cheese, but you know what? Got to enjoy it. And one more shot of the sub by the pool before we get to the Oyster Perpetuals that I think we'll probably enjoy a lot more. Yeah, the tapered case is nice. Don't like the wide fat clasp. Epsa, I would love to experience it. I feel like there's a lot of debate around that completely. Look at how thick this bracelet is on this watch now. I've just noticed it looking at the, the stream on the laptop. This is a monster looking bracelet at 21, hey? It changes the look completely. So the question is, would, I mean, the idea, at least my belief is the idea is because it's technically 41, even though it's like 40.7 or 40.5, I don't know, uh, having a wider bracelet visually brings down the overall presence of the case on the wrist. So in a way they cancel each other out. If it's a larger case, you put a fatter bracelet on, it kind of overpowers the case in a way and brings down the visual size. Um, yeah, I'd love to experience it though. I'd love to own one of these to just cap off that. Okay, let's move on next to some OPs and enjoy ourselves. It's 40.5. Thank you, Blue Shirt. So now we get to some OP41s. And Juan just, I can't remember his description around these, but he said, yeah, I just picked these up to experiencing them. To experiencing them. I think the alcohol is finally in the brain. Uh, picked them up to experience them and uh, doesn't know what he's going to do with them exactly. He might sell them. He's not, he's not into gray market and all that stuff, but he wanted to see what these colors were about. Uh, no weight needed, Mr. JJ. Talking about the uh, the heft of the watch now, it's good. Sea Dweller 43, Epster. Speaking of which, 
We're going to have a look at one in a moment. Has Russell just joined us? I see Thomas tagging him. Awesome. Russell, welcome. We've had a look at some good stuff so far. Great Patek a second ago. Hitting the last of my dregs of coffee. So we have the British Racing Green, whatever you want to call this color arrangement. Uh, yeah, Tom, alcohol goes to the brain. Sure does. Uh, just helps me settle a bit. Coffee and whiskey or wine, and I'm away. A for away with these presentations. So how cool is this? We see the green, and we also see the yellow. I thought it was very nice to see them side by side and just compare the colors, the arrangement. Chatted about these watches enough. As you probably know, if you've been following the page, I did like a 20-minute long debate around the 41s. Um, lots of talk about the bracelet going on in the chat. Making it pre-maxi case proportions. Yeah, I'd, I would love to get that experience of being able to handle the first gen and this latest model side by side and really run through it. I feel like they've, they've, they have nailed the balance of this new model. So, so black hat valet saying not loving them. I think the yellow is very charming. But again, these watches are, you know, I, I still have the strong belief that they are supplementary purchases. When it comes to getting into the hobby and getting out, becoming, sorry, say getting into the Rolex brand and out, I don't think these watches would do it for you. And these are, these are pieces that you can wear and throw on and have fun with. But next to models like these, they're not the ones that, you know, when you're talking about trimming down a collection, they're not the ones that are going to stay, I don't believe. Uh, but I do love that that blend between the two. Many love the green over the yellow. I do find the yellow charming just because it stands out. Reminds me of the 90s. Also think yellow as a spot color, as a highlight is very nice. Yeah, absolute joy having you all here. Three and nine should be different. Uh, oh, we're talking about the uh, the double batons. God, that debate. Again, there's, there's so much to talk through about this watch. The thing is that's nice is that the OP now has attention pulled to it. And they deserve the attention. I was working on that write-up video for like months before the, the Basel releases happened. And then, not Basel releases, Basel World, what's that? Uh, months before these new releases happened. And uh, these just threw a complete spanner in the works. So now, luckily, the OP does have some attention. Right. So, motoring through. Juan, awesome awesome selection. This is such a beautiful shot of this watch. Really appreciate it, man. The effort you take... To, to do all of this and to send in watches every week. I really, really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Okay, so we've seen the sub. Again, look at the way the bracelet works next to the case. It's such a different looking watch. It's not squared off anymore. And the bracelet, yeah, I think they've done something pretty good here. I'd love to experience it, that, that width. Okay, next up to John. John sends in another El Primero. This being similar to the one we saw earlier, a 40 millimeter the 40th anniversary limited edition. Now, John was in the chat a second ago. I think he's still here. Um, so uh, I'm trying to remember now. The story goes is that talk about the A384 really got him. <laughs> Rest in peace, Basel. Michael, I love it, love it. Uh, Juan and only Hans, you're a legend. You with your one-liners are just as good as as Clive. Love it. So, um, geez, that chair, squeaky chair. So this watch was released prior to the A384, I think, the 37 mil. And I think John picked this up just because we were talking about it so much on these shows and other places, and he loves it. It has a 20, 20 millimeter wide bracelet, so unfortunately can't fit the Gay Frere. But got to say, the size does work very nicely. Uh, he's still here in 2009. Awesome. Thank you for that, John. Uh, different color subs. I mean, this is as true as... Oh, very good point. I didn't even realize that. So hold on a second. The, the A384 has solid black panda dial. Having the different colors is more in, in tune with the A386 and the next generations. I do like it. Uh, mentioning about date windows, I oh, know mentioning. Yeah, I, it's, we spoke about it earlier. I do appreciate it offset here, out of the way. It's not something that you notice directly. Uh, very interesting arrangement. And just look at the type on this dial. I think oh, you can really appreciate it here. It's just so, so clean. Yeah, funny how things catch up with you because I'm working on an El Primero video and it so happens that we have like five different submissions of this. It's great. Um, so here is saying, observe how sunburst on the dial has followed the same pattern on the top of the case brushing. Whoa, hold on a second. Is that so? 
So it also radiates outwards. I did not notice that. Look how the case brushing actually radiates outwards. We haven't, we can't see this watch in the sunlight, but I get what you mean. That is really interesting. Thanks for that that detail. And Zahira, you sent in an awesome, one of the last shots of the show is going to be another El Primero with movements and beautiful photos. So we can enjoy that. Um, yeah, yeah. So hacking El Primero is just so cool. Okay, let's move on next to Carl. I don't know if Carl is still in the chat with us, but he has a broad collection of pieces. And it's so funny. He sends in an, an Invicta. I don't think we've ever featured in Invicta on the show before. Skiing on the slopes in Canada. Don't know where in Canada exactly. At first when I saw this, I thought glycine. I'm not well versed with Invicta watches in general. I saw the wings and thought it must be a glycine of some kind, a glycine combat sub or whatever. And I saw Invicta and thought, ooh, that's something else. And then you can understand why he picked it up. I mean, the dial's great and it's definitely a beta watch for him in the space. Yeah, he has quite a broad collection of pieces and for what he's doing now, why not enjoy a beater on the slopes? Look at the mountain range in the background there. Now, he did also send in shots of him in full ski gear, which I didn't save because there's just so many bloody watches to run through and it's difficult to keep up with talking over myself. But uh, yeah, it's awesome. I love seeing watches in context in an environment like this. Pity I don't live by any mountains. Uh, pro diver, Eric says. God, is that what it's called? Yeah. Uh, Invicta as a brand, I I mean, they have quite a lot of history. Eh? They do have quite a lot of heritage to their name from back in the day, but they have since really thrown it out the window with some of their models. I mean, lots of people, I think Red Bar mentions that you can have any watch you want except Invicta. Don't bring Invicta into the show, into the discussion. Oh, this is great. I love it. Love it. Carl, thank you for sending this in. I do say that dial is great. Also enjoy the quarters on the on the arrangement. That's something else elongated hour hand you don't see that very often yeah invicta diver good to see it in the snow okay moving on next to chrono craze same wings like the morgan motor company touristers you guys and your attention to detail i don't know how you do it man i don't know how you do it chrono craze i don't know if you're in the chat with us or well, brent mentioning the pro divers are actually and that's it i mean talking about value for price you're getting a great watch for like 150 200 bucks i don't know what they go for but i would imagine in and around that space okay two chrono craze carl thank you for this i did see you here a second ago we're jumping to a zin i really hope this is a 104 because this was like i, th I think this was three in the morning when i was saving this email um and chrono craze is in the chat saying i need a grail chronograph someday not sure if it would be an omega coaxial moon watch or some zenith El Primero. Mm. Mm. What is this reference? Is it a 103 or a 104? Help me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, so he sent in three shots of this on a rubber strap. Chrono Craze has a YouTube channel. And really, have a look. Have a look at his channel. I'm pretty sure it uses, he uses the same name. And I actually stumbled onto it a while back. It was like a every week you, you take a video of the watch on your wrist, Chrono Craze. Please plug your YouTube page in the chat for everyone. Um, so the Zen 104, it's just a classic. I love it on the bracelet. This, oh, come back, also on the leather. He sent in like eight shots and I only saved three just for the sake of variety and yeah, got to, got to motor through some of these. But the, the bracelet is such, it's just so true to Zen. You can almost identify it as a Zen by its bracelet and I love that. The 104 has this, uh, the aesthetic is great. It's just so true German aviation inspired, you know everything as clive would like to mention it has contrast has the best contrast out there needle hands so true to form and on the leather strap it just sings this is some kind of rally strap i think yeah there's there's a lot to appreciate zin as a brand i've said often i'd love to own one of the ux the, the ezm models one day so much to appreciate in this family um so chrono craze check him out he does have a youtube channel and i think i stumbled onto a review of yours back in the day i can't remember which one it was but you've got hundreds of videos and you just have a brief talk through around the watches that you're wearing over the course of the week and yeah check out his channel fully fully endorses um andrew st pierre white looks like oh Mr. Marcus, I stumbled onto uh, 4X Overland by a complete accident and realized that he was a South African. I think he spent most of his life in Cape Town, I think. No? I can't remember. But I stumbled on his Submariner video. Anderson, okay, I'm going to put this into the chat. 4X 
Overland. Uh oh, hold on. Let's see if I can get this right. Forex Overland. That's his YouTube channel. And awesome guy, really is. I mean, if you want to know a true South African that doesn't like no holds barred when it comes to sharing opinions and talking points, he's a great guy. And uh, I actually made a video all about his Submariner, trying to get more pull to his page. And it's just an awesome story. He sits down for like 20 minutes and talks about how his, it's, it's so good, man. Just uh, so look up Forex Overland and look up Rolex Submariner. It's got like 80,000 hits, well worth, well worth looking at. And you can really appreciate it. Chrono Craze, I've had a look at this watch, gotta say. Zinn, it's just so clean, man. The automatic arrangement, the type, stunning. Yeah, there's lots to appreciate with this piece. Just German. If you want something that epitomizes German, this is it. And speaking of which, we're jumping to Les next. <laughs> Trevor Noah. Yeah, Trevor Noah is a legend as well. Uh, owning more than seven watches. I don't know what's going on in the chat. Seven deadly sins, uh, you guys. So to Les next. Going to have a look at, this is a crate. So he has an awesome turntable back here. I don't know what or where. I see AM. I recognize this logo. Hold on a second. Why do I recognize this logo? I've seen it before. Uh, someone help me here. AM, and it's just this type I've seen. Is it, is it a record label? Is it a someone else? Someone out there probably knows. But this watch is an unknown Ukrainian brand, 45 millimeters, and it's offset. I just think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, a driver mentioning now. Someone please help in the chat. And uh, Sam Ray, just subscribed to, uh, to Forex Overland. Yeah, he's a great guy. Would recommend. He's just just no holds barred in the way he discusses things. If you're not into four by even like someone like me who's not into four by fouring, I just watch his stuff because he, he comments on things. He's really knowledgeable about four by fours, and uh, it's good fun. If you like cars, I'm sure you'll enjoy his talk. A and M Records, thank you, Roar of the Tiger. I've seen this before. I'm pretty sure that these are featured at the bottom of of album labels. And okay, Sex Pistols. Hold on a sec. Okay, Sex Pistols. I'm getting I'm getting somewhere. I'm waking up. How, cra how crazy is this watch, though? Sadly, those like me who wear watches on their right wrists would never be able to rock these. But uh, it's just nice. Love the type. Unknown Ukrainian brand. Uh, Chrono Craze saying, great show so far. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Dropped in before the end of my workday. It's great having you here, man, really. And again, follow Chrono Craze's page. He deserves a lot more views and subs for what he does. Uh, he has such a broad collection of watches. It's insane. Uh, Okay, wasn't Zeppelin on AM? I think so, Nefarion. That's where I might have seen it before. Yeah, okay, okay. So getting back to the watch. Breguet type numerals in a way, blued hands. Love it. It feels like an, an av a navigation watch in a way. And Eric Bell mentioning Kajiv. Is that the brand? <laughs> the dial is slightly misaligned. Yeah, they must have had some really bad quality control issues. Yeah, it's a great looking piece. Dig it. 45 mils. And I think he says 45 by 20 as a as a lug width swan song uh driving style yeah thomas thomas does it all these i mean look no further than the Vash, the vacheron american 1921 right i love it so much okay les thanks for sending this in you are in the chat good having you here sir and thank you for everyone who's been mentioning the am and zeppelin and sex pistols and all the rest jumping to london stew next and he sends in a vostok now, London Stew has a broad selection of watches. I don't think we've ever seen a Vostok from them before. As far as I know, it's an Amphibia classic. Vostok, similar to Seiko and other names, it's so difficult to pinpoint their models. I do love the dial arrangement on this, though. And he picked it up for like 100 bucks. I mean, when it comes to just getting watches to enjoy, here's an example. BDev mentioning anchovy and mozzarella records. I feel like you're pulling my leg there, BDev. Uh, the VC21 for drive. Yeah, Tom, fully agree. Um, yeah, nice arrangement of the dial. I think I, I, out of all the things, the dial is the one element that I like the most. The rest, a uh, little bit disjointed for my tastes. Um, the quarters, the quarters with the triangles there, it's a sandwich dial too, which is nice. These really look like cricket stump styled hands. How cool is that? And no loom up here. I don't know what's going on. Again, Vostok is another brand that you can get lost in because there's just so much variety out there. Very 70s. As far as I know, it's it's a modern piece, right? Uh, he sourced it. And he yeah, again, he got it for like 100 bucks. And he said it's just such a great, a great watch to get in to enjoy. Uh, the main one is the sub. What do they call it? It's a Submariner of some kind. God. I've been running the show now for two hours and 
five minutes. So forgive me if I do mix and slow my words. Demetrius, 2 a.m. in Greece. Goodbye. Absolute pleasure having you here, man, really. Thank you so much for sending in uh, your watches. And for all of you who stay awake to watch these shows, what's wrong with you? Like, honestly, what is wrong with you? Get some sleep. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks for being here, Demetrius. Uh, grounds the former. Okay, so I'm going to move on next. London Stu. I do enjoy the mesh bracelet too. Wear the hell out of this thing. Just beat it around. With watches like these, I like to see how far you can push them, how far you can actually wear them properly, you know? Amphibian, that's the one, Raymond. Thank you. Amphibian and the Komandersky. Komandersky. Eric Bell, thanks. Uh, yeah, you have a few of those, right, Eric? Eric and his dive watches. Don't even get us started. Oh, don't tell me the chat. Hold on a sec. Just my chat is glitching out, and it's the worst thing. I'm just hoping that the signal doesn't cut again. Moving on to Matthias. Matthias? Matthias? To a Grand Seiko. Another Grand Seiko. So funny. The first time I feature Seiko, and all of a sudden we get lots of them. This model we don't see very often. Now, I'm sorry, Matthias, you sent me a great email. Sometimes I quite literally get emails that are a thousand words or more. And as much as I appreciate them, it's, it's great for me to sit down and read them when I get the time, but then I can't transcribe it into the videos. So I'm sorry about that. But uh, he did mention that he wanted to pick up a Grand Seiko and this one, this one for him just sung. It's the GS SLGA001. I mean, that sounds very Marine Master-ish with that, that uh, arrangement. I do, I must say the rain, the, the way the dial's been done here with the power reserve, Great to see the loom, the date at the corner here. I don't know how I feel about the date at the four. That's very Seiko-esque. Everyone loves the hour hand. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of juxtapo juxtaposed because you're looking at a very modern take on a watch with the sharp edges and everything there. It feels very modern. And then you suddenly see cathedral hand and you think, huh, this is a different time period. So it's, yeah, it's fascinating what Grand Seiko does. I'd be interested in knowing why this is their inspiration. I can understand the minute hand. That's very true to Seiko's dive watch background. But the, uh, the arrangement of this hand, I'm still a little bit on the fence on it. Got to say it stands out. And there's mention about the logo. Uh, if they lose the Grand Seiko logo, I would love the Grand Seiko. Oh, no, you know what? I would say if they, if they lost the type, the actual text of Grand Seiko, I would love it. I just don't think they need it at all. GS is good enough. I think that's what you meant, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's a really cool. And also on on rubber, rubber strap wears very nicely. Got to say, there's a lot to be discovered, a lot to learn. I am enjoying browsing through Seiko's at the moment. Um, right on. Uh, Eric Bell said, I sent in a Hydro mod. Eric, I'm sorry. I, I've had like over 100, 100 emails, quite literally backed up since the last show we've run i can't keep up with the submissions anymore guys if i do miss them they weren't on purpose there's so many on the backlog that i do skip past because there's just so much it's insane i don't know how these shows uh how these shows have gotten so popular but it's yeah it's a joy uh zahir is saying thanks for the good show i uh, wish you all a great night oh man thank you and really uh need to drop out i'm driving tomorrow morning we'll catch you tomorrow zahira your el primero will be getting a lot of love at the end do not worry. Thank you for the super chat, man, really. And yeah, take care, as Thomas says. No need to apologize, <laughs> Eric. Yeah, some of the diehards are here. Come rain, come shine. It's awesome. Matthias, thank you for sending this in. Going to move on next to Max, to a Navi timer. Now, I don't know the reference of this. Look at the context, though. In the woods, autumn leaves, jersey. This is a really interesting model. Kind of reminds me of the, uh, the 765. 765 in a way with the type 20 style arrangement panda dial uh bezel that's actually functional that you can turn i'm not much of a fan of the date on this but i do love the oh, it's such an awesome shot too look at that okay getting back into the chat uh mr marcus i would rock my north flag freezing arctic to south african karoo if i could travel north flag it's really underrated I did a video about it, right, and discussed how it has this futurism style, and the history of the North Flag is just amazing. I really wish they could revamp the North Flag a bit more, give it some limelight. Um, yeah, as here again, thank you for, join for joining us and stopping in. So Neferon says, I submitted a picture of me wearing a Zeitwerk in a Ferrari next to a supermodel. Did you see that one? I didn't, Neferion, but I did see, and I have saved, a uh, Patek 5370 in a Scuderia Ferrari, which we will have a look at later on, uh, but I love it, Neferion. No, I didn't. 
Speaking of which, though, I'm not kidding. We're going to be seeing inside of Ferrari. We're going to be seeing a Patek later on. Like these shows, they go all over the place. Um, this is a very pretty looking Navi timer. Takes all the fluff away from the uh, the typical arrangement that we see with the slide rule arrangement. And we just have simple Type 20 inspired elements. I'm interested in knowing this. It's called the Navi Timer 8 for anyone who wants to know. <laughs> and Russell's saying, yeah, I had several similar shots passed on yours. Yeah, Russell, Russell's the guy who sent in the shot. It's so funny. Russell, good jab. Yeah, Nefarion, apologies. I passed on yours for Russell's instead. It's so funny. Uh, do love it. Do love this arrangement. And next we have the Zin T2. Now, how, I mean, in this category, again, I said a moment ago, the, uh, the EZMs, the UXs, pay attention to these because there's so much variety in this space, well worth your time. Uh, so many, I mean, this has, this has an argon, it's argon filled. It's just an argon filled arrangement inside it. Should I try and say this? Einsat zam, hold on, hold on. Einsat zeit messer, einsat zeit messer, EZM. That's uh, what it means. Someone who speaks German, please tell me what that actually means. Like, I, I should know German pretty well, but I don't. I'm, I've got more of a Dutch background, but uh, this is an awesome machine. Really is great. This is EZM T2, 2000 meter waterproof. Argon filled, great balance, typical German arrangement there. Yeah, chats are going. All over the show, talking about grinding teeth. Real Navi timers have slide. Oh, that's true. I mean, Mason, that is true. I, I guess I, I kind of misspoke in a way, saying that it gets rid of so flippantly like that. But the original Navi timers, they did, right? Before before they transitioned into the whole uh, Type 20 kind of space, Navi timers have always had the slide rule arrangement there. Um, so they call it the, Avigate, the, Avi, the Aviator 8, okay, on the non-slide rule. Thank you for that, Mason. So Brightling did a U-turn with the branding. The Zin U50, oh, there's some awesome ones. Uh, just look at Zin. There's so much variety out there. Highly recommend. German, I am German, Michael. Yeah, sorry sorry that I butchered that uh, description. It's been over two hours, and you can imagine my uh, my non-English is not uh, very good at this time of the show. SBGA02, are we talking about? Oh, that's interesting. So you're telling me this has kind of the similar, has a similar inspiration with the offset crown and the handset. Okay, i got to move on. Got a, got a motor. Uh, next from Max. Is this the same Max? I don't know if it is. But it's. I think this is the first Seamaster Professional in the modern arrangement that we've seen. By the fire. Always good. Black dial. And I really love what this watch has been able to do in our zeitgeist, in our culture. Mr. C, hold on a second. I saw a $1 from you earlier, and I didn't acknowledge it. Mr. C, thank you for the $1. Really, thank you so much. It's nice seeing you back on form. No more of this $10 BS, Mr. C. $1 is your way. It's the way it goes. Uh, Michael, they're saying U50 is cool. Uh, so, talking, did I miss, hold on, I missed another super chat. Hold on, man. What am I doing here? Oh, no, thank you so much for, for the super chat as well. Really appreciate it, man. Thomas, thank you for alerting me to it. Again, I get so wrapped up in talking about the watches on the main screen that I miss what's going on. Andreas says it means mission timer. Thank you, Andreas. Zin is so underrated. Yeah, I agree, Mr. Marcus. Just look under EZM. EZM 1, EZM 3, 4, 12, 14. There's so many different models. Mission timer. I should know that, right? I should wake up to it. I love what this watch has been able to do in our circle of watch collecting spaces. You know, it's like many people really like to compare this to the Submariner as its direct competition. But I think... This has just done so much in its own way, its own right. And in a way, I wanted to actually talk about this watch next to the new El Primero that came out. Because I think seeing this, uh, just listen to me talk, I don't know what I'm going to say now, but seeing the, the new release of this Chrono Master Sport, it looks so true to Zenith's identity and what they've done. They've refreshed it in many ways. But it still kind of feels uh, uninspired in a couple of ways. Uh, when I look at what Omega did bringing out this new Seamaster, they completely reworked the watch next to the earlier generations. Now, in a way, the Zenith does stay so true to its roots. It just it just works on models like Anniversary Editions. There's a whole range of models that they, they focused on. But uh, I think this watch really it caught my attention. So I think it came out in 2017, if I'm not wrong. And they just completely reworked it, like engraved ceramic dial, fully new movement, uh, date arrangement, just the overall presence on the wrist. The bracelet was updated. They, uh, yeah, they did all sorts. 
Talking about German watches. Is Junior Johnson leaving us? Oh, no, Mr. JJ. Sorry. I don't know if Junior's with us. Uh, Got to go. Mr. JJ, thank you for being here. And for all of you who are still here with us and who are leaving, it's a pleasure having you. Uh, yeah. So I look forward to talking about the Zenith. This watch has done quite a great job in our space. Everyone's jumping on them because they're just, they're just great. They do what they need to do. They're real tool watches, real workhorses. The white dial is special, mezzanine. Yeah, great white. Max, thanks for sending this in. I don't know if it's the same Max, but I've got to keep going. This is called a Novell Diver Chrono from the 1960s. We don't have an exact point of reference for the timeline. Look at that cityscape. I don't know where this was taken, but look how cool this watch is. One element that stood out to me that I noticed is, check the bezel, how you have dividing lines between the two numerals. I love that. Between the three and the zero, between the four and the zero, the five squared plots. How, when do you ever see this arrangement on a, on a model? Diver chrono. So this is technically, I mean, diving chronographs. I made a video all about that arrangement and how some are just bizarre and bonkers, others really well executed. Here is an example of a vintage model, 17 rubies, Inca block. Uh, you don't see the brand Novell anymore. The V is interesting. Yeah, it is. I mean, it cuts cuts right through the middle there. It stands out. looks like a square root sign in a way, you know? Yeah, it's just so typical of the 60s. I mean, look at the handset. It's just so peculiar. The size is also great. Kind of looks like 42. And you took another shot of it on the desk. We can enjoy there are so many vintage chronographs out there, vintage makers that we just don't know. Junior Johnson, you are with us. Thank you for the super chat, Junior. Uh, here I was thinking that you were just about to leave us. It's a pleasure having you here. It's always a pleasure. I mean, it's amazing how so many of you just love these shows. And I don't know how you can listen to me talk for so long. You know, over the course of these 20 plus episodes that we've been running, you've listened to me talk more than you'd ever need to listen to someone talk over the course of an entire lifetime. You realize that, right? Think about it. 20 shows, roughly three and a half hours each. What is that mathematically? It's like, it's, it's insane. It's like 100 hours worth of listening to me talking. I don't know, I don't get it. Uh, so, so Forbin saying, how cool it would be to get rid of the valve, the helium valve. Yeah, I mean, it's a part of their identity now. It's something that does define the Seamaster and, and all those models in the brand. I like it. I do like in a way that it's, it's their way of defining themselves. I'm not someone who really appreciates it on the dive watch, but at the same time, it's a nice feature to have. It's a novel. Should I say it's a novel feature to have on a dive watch? Uh, yeah. And and Jim, thank you for the super chat, Jim. Uh, maybe I have one of your watches in here. Maybe I've featured it already. I don't know. I'm just riding seat of my pants. Nice looking watch though. Got to say, novel or chrono. Never seen one before. Don't know if we'll ever see one again. <laughs> nice comment there, watch experience. Oh, we're jumping on a nice piece now. Next. Uh, Michael, thanks for sending this in. I do love these outliers in the space. Check this out. Now, someone who might know their art a little bit better, oops, their, their concept art a little bit better than me would probably be able to describe this. I'm thinking, just off the top of my head, this looks kind of Stormtrooper-esque. So maybe this is a dark trooper from Star Wars? Don't know. Don't quote me. I'm, I'm very disjointed in this area. Someone can maybe agree or disagree. But the Sea Dweller 43... This is one of the modern watches I've had some good hands-on time with in the Rolex camp. I love it. Les says, you have never met my wife. I don't know. I've caught the brunt of that. I don't know where that joke came from, but uh, I'll try and wake up to it. <laughs> oh, as in, as in you're, okay, talking about talk time. Never met your wife. She talks more than, okay, I got it. I hope she's not watching, Les. You're going to get a slap for that. Uh, Russell, always keep the sound off and just read the chat. Is that so, Russell? You're a legend. Russell is such a, I tell you what, Russell also has those one-liners that zing. You know what? I don't blame you, Russell. I do talk a lot of BS. I do talk a lot of BS half the time. Doxa Sub, I sent you, has helium. Raymond, we haven't gotten to your watches yet, but we will in a moment. Uh, we are going to look at some Doxa. Warhammer, I, I do not know. Someone can maybe help me. Mandalorian, uh, here we go. I'm worth watching. Mr. C, thank you. <laughs> uh yeah, talking about unscrewed this and that and 20 shows, three hours each, 30, 60 hours. BDF, think about it. You're listening to me for 60 hours. I mean, what is wrong with you guys? So, c 43, I, I really like what they've done with this watch. This, I think this watch is going to go down as similar to some of the outliers in this area. 
And this was such a prototype, as the original Sea Dweller was in many ways, don't you think? This was the blueprint that has now established what the new Super K subs are going to be like. And I would say what the new GMTs are going to be like very soon. 41 mils with the 21 bracelet. This watch was the test platform. And they did some weird stuff. Like I made a video about how the movement is too small for this watch. And in order to compensate, they put the Cyclops lens in. If you've seen this watch without the Cyclops, you'll see what I mean. The date is way inside the dial. And if you didn't have it there, it would look very disjointed. But in a way, it works. It doesn't break it up too much. But then there's lots of debate about the Sea Dweller with the Cyclops. And it just doesn't line up with this heritage and history and blah, whatever. Uh, awesome size, though. 43 mils on the wrist. 21 mil lug width, I think. It's a watch that anyone could rock, even if you have a 16, I'm going to quote Tim Mosso, 16, 16 centimeter wrist, would, would enjoy it. It's good. It's a really nice size. It works well. Did I miss another Mr. C? Hold on. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Talk about Noel. Notice the square indices flipped sideways. Yeah, Forbin, it's such a peculiar model. Sorry that I'm missing you guys here. We don't begrudge the Seamaster Helium. We begrudge that it's not flush as on several other brands. Hmm. That's a good point, Mason. Uh, crystals made of chocolate. Oh, Eric. Eric has good experience with this watch. Eric had a Sea Dweller 43 that he subsequently sold because he was cleaning, I'm going to try and remember this, cleaning barnacles off the underside of a boat. And he scratched the, it was like the first week of owning this watch. And he scratched the sapphire of this exact model, the Sea Dweller 43. Oh, geez, Eric, you've had some, you've had, you really wear your divers. You know, I think Eric has spent more, more of his life in the water than he has on land. Uh, he is an avid dive enthusiast. And yeah, so he wears his tool watches and scratched the sapphire. I think he sold it like a week later. And that's, yeah, love the red text. I agree, Thomas. I so wish Rolex was less stingy with the red text and just went all over it. They've done such a good job with this watch. The more I look at it, the more I think just the, the fully graduated bezel, it just sings. Highly recommend this piece out there. Tough barnacles. That's so funny. Date quick set. Yeah, it's awesome. This really is a king, a king of the dive watch sphere. The sea dweller in general would, would recommend. Hell, I'd love a, a 1665. Who wouldn't? Okay, next up to Nathaniel. I have never seen this model before, but just look at the setting first off in North Carolina. And it's called a Tracer NB. Hold on. Tracer Code Blue. Interesting take on the field watch. Now, I mean, the way you can immediately tell that it's an American-inspired field watch is with the 24-hour time inset. Needle hands. This looks almost exactly, if, if Megan is still watching the show, she is she's awesome. Uh, Megan sent a group of us uh, the new, oh, what's it called? The Drop Felix. And it looks so much like this in the, the arrangement. The orange hand, the uh, the, the needle point. I have a strong feeling that the watch this could come from the same kind of manufacturing line. The same people behind it brought up this too. I promise to feature it next week on the show. Really nice arrangement. And also has a sub bezel, which is pretty cool. Uh, love that backdrop. I mean, it looks like Middle Earth. You guys, your descriptions are amazing. Look at that. Looks like Tolkien just pulled it out of the... Yeah, looks so good. So this is awesome. I, me and my, my knowledge of America is very limited, but North Carolina, is it known to be very mountainous, very rocky? I don't know. <laughs> I'm clearly too stupid to wear a G-Shock, Eric. No, I think, I mean, I also have a strong passion for, for divers, especially the reissue category. And you just got to wear what you love, man. That's the joy. Mega mentioning loves the Sea Dweller. I mean, yeah, it's one of my favorites, honestly. I would wear this watch. If I owned it, I would totally rock this, given the chance. Uh, even if the 43 is a little bit too big for my wrist, I would still wear it. Absolute machine. Really interesting piece. So it's kind of this... Reminds me of Ben Rus. I think Ben Rus made a range of diver, no, marathon, similar. Diver field watch inspired in many ways. Uh, it's great. Never heard of the brand before, but uh, as is the case, there's so many brands out there that you just never hear, never see. And uh, yeah, these shows, these shows you get to pick up on all sorts of stuff. Officially certified, that's really necessary. Yeah, Buck, it's funny. Got to say, brands. some brands do go a little bit tongue in cheek with their references, yeah. Okay, so next up to Honor. I don't know if you're in the chat still, Honor, but we're going to have a good time looking at your piece in a moment. Uh, yes, he's here. Okay, tritium tubes. Does it have tritium? Yes, it does. Hold on a second. Are these tritium tubes? You're helping me out. Thank you, everyone. We're going to have a look at another one in a moment, a really hardcore built tritium tube model. I've got to, move, I've got to carry on moving. Uh, Honor's next, and he is in the chat. So 
and I see NorCal is leaving us. Sorry, NorCal. NorCal, thank you for being here. You've been here since the beginning of the show. Really appreciate it, man. Thanks for joining in. Now, Lasuto Riganal CQ. Speaking of reissue divers, how cool is this shot, by the way? Get to enjoy the loom. Oh, great. He sent in a whole, a whole range of these, and I've saved four for us to enjoy. This I like to pair next to my Seamaster 57. I think they land in that same kind of category. And Skin Diver. I mean, if you want to know the one aspect that sums up the Skin Diver watch, look how cool that is. The case on these models. Similar to the 6.2 MAS, uh, the way these cases have been done, it's so true to that, that 60s era. Uh, look at that dial. It's so fun. There's... This is one of the areas that I want to speak about as a as a group of watches that you should be looking at more at this time where all the demand and interest is going towards models like the, the Rolex brands and, and Omegas too, actually. Omegas getting huge attention. Look at these reissue divers and reissue chronographs in different brands and categories. Because they're in a they're in a completely alternate zone. They are not these these prototypes, they give you this feeling of development and they're not perfect, but they're just quirky and no one would recognize them and they're worth talking about. There's, there's so much. Uh, another German, Michael says, yeah, Glastus are really underappreciated. Yeah, they are for sure. I love these. I love these photos. And there's some more shots of it at an angle. You can appreciate the matte dial. We've got a loop. Is that a Glastus loop over there? That's so cool. Is this an alligator watch box? Watch enthusiasts, man. We do have interesting tastes. Yeah, in my in my case, I love I love a rubber strap, especially something like a, a tropic strap on a watch like this. On a skin diver, it's just it's just natural to have a tropic strap on it, right? Uh, look at that finish, and just simple things like domed crystals that we we don't get often on the modern things. A domed crystal just plays with light so differently. You don't get this refractive shine in your face. It looks like acrylic, but it's not. And uh, the faux, I don't know, you can't call it faux loom, but the, the beige loom on it there on the wrist, wrist shot week. How awesome is that? Not only is the type amazing, but the dial is very specialized. Uh, yeah, I can just leave this on the screen for a little while and try and get to the, get to the chat if I can. Um, glass mine. Eric, I don't know what that means, but please help, help me out a bit more. Um, interesting taste, certifiable. Yeah, there's, it's, it's one of these watches in the space that does deserve a lot more attention. They are getting a lot of attention. Um, amazing movement, the date setting where it is, the, even the bezel. I mean, the bezel is so true to form. And speaking of which, I did mention this earlier that we're going to be looking at, actually very soon, another skin diver, SLA037, which is a, uh, a Seiko. Grand Se should I say, Seiko Prospects, one of the best in this category. Megan, thank you for the super chat. Really, thank you for sitting here and, and listening to me talk along. I, I know what's going on in your world. It's been very difficult to listen to me blab on for hours and hours, but uh, I really appreciate it. All of you out there, honestly. Uh, yeah, that's your vintage collection, 60 and 70s, very tasty. They have some good stuff. Honestly, like I say, look at Zinn, look at Glasuta as well. All right, oh, no, thank you for sending these in. I, this, this shot to me is one of the winners. Uh, I can appreciate this watch for what it is as this prototype developmental watch that is just so so out there and peculiar and strange. Okay, so next to Orange Hand. I don't know if you're with us still, Orange Hand, but you just picked this up recently and you get my full attention with this. 1973, British Army issued W10 Hamilton. This is not a reissue that they brought out. This is the real deal. I think it's just superb. If you want a watch that, that epitomizes the cushion case field watch, that's it. This is the model. Sam Ray is coming back. Good to have you here, Sam Ray. Uh, we are still motoring through. We still have quite a bit to go. That's uh, not bad. And we've been running the show now for two hours, two and a half, two and a half hours, excuse me. Yeah, spoken about field watches to death. Everyone has, has seen, like the Smiths. Yeah, so... This watch pretty much took the inspiration from the Smiths, which took the inspiration from the uh, the Dirty Dozen, and so it goes. But once Hamilton left, they, they kept their movements behind, and CWC took over, and then they used the same aesthetic with their models, and so it goes. Very gradual development of these field watches over time. Roar of the Tiger asking the case size. I think it's about 38 millimeters. Don't, don't quote me on that. But uh, W10. This was also called the W10, and... It's just great. Just great. Look how 
clean. What a beautiful model you found as well, Orange Hand. If you're still here with us, the tritium has aged so nice. It's so gracefully, actually. You would expect it to see. This watch, I don't think, has seen any action in its life. I don't think it's been exposed to any water or anything. It is just, I, I love these field watches, especially there's something that I, I prefer, the British field watch over the American field watch. Sorry, everyone. Uh, the Hamilton lovers out there, something about the 24-hour time I don't like as much as the triangle at the 12. Very very much a Flieger-inspired arrangement next to the more die-hard field watch with uh, you know 24-hour time as well. It's 36 mil. Okay, thanks for that, Ron Chan. Um, yeah, flat four. There's so many. Railway track. I mean, Smith's W10. If, we, if I speak about it any longer, I'm probably going to go red in the face. There's so many factors. You can find these, by the way. Speaking of reissues, I think you can find these for like 500, 600 bucks. Would recommend. Go and find them. Handwound, Hamilton. They've just recreated these. I think they call it W10 reissue. They call it something else. Hamilton Khaki Field. I don't know what the name is, but just like this. And they are awesome. So have a look. Really have a look. Less is more, Royal the Tiger says. Yeah. So there's something about this arrangement that just always sings to me, brings me back. Check it out. I didn't even notice. There are actually serifs on the six. I mean, come on. That's just so cool. Attention to detail, broad arrow, tritium. Yep. Spoken about these enough in my time. Next up, flat five. Really? Would you call this a flat five? I don't, I don't know. Russell, Russell's just pulling my leg. Russell's on a show. He's having a good time. I mean, I was chatting to him earlier today, mentioning how behind I am with work, and he was just pulling my leg. Next up, we have Penny. Penny, who runs a channel called All In Her Movements, I think. I'm going to put her, put her name into the chat now, but you won't believe what it is. It's another Submariner. Now, if there are any watch channels to look at, check out Penny's page. Um, All in her movements i think check it out on the search search her channel i've just put it in the description and it's always appreciated having a woman run a show we need more women in this hobby honestly it's it's like i think the percentages is like 99.3 percent male dominated and i think to hear a woman's perspective now the story goes that she picked up a oh, i'm trying to remember now i mean so disconnected from the community she picked up a mill gas, i think and then she got a call from her AD saying, got a Submariner, pick it up. And she just, this is the first day she got it on her wrist. 41 mil is a dream watch. Absolute dream watch. And yeah, it's it's great. I think Mark P is, Mark P would attest to how great Penny is. She sits and just talks for like 30 minutes about, you know, a full on story uh, behind the watch itself. Again, if I'm not making content, I barely watch watch content, but I need to check out his stuff. It's It sounds like such a good time. Uh, this is awesome. Such a cool watch. How many of these have we featured now? At least four of the new subs. Hilarious, right? Did not expect that at all. And Penny has a great channel, as Blue Shirt mentions. Yeah, fully agree. She's also, just to send in the email, I, like I really appreciate it. Mark mentioning, please follow her. It's just entertainment. If you think I'm funny, I don't think I'm funny, but if you think I'm funny, then you will laugh your head off listening to her talking about things. Uh, coming up to two and a half hours, to fifth through with the watches, Andreas, we're doing well. We're actually, I would say, three quarters of the way through. This is the last arrangement here, probably about, what should I say, 30 more. Won't take too long. Doing pretty well. Uh, Jenny Ellie, who speaks English so well and the collection. Raymond, yeah, I mean, Jenny's got a huge channel, just dwarfs virtually everyone else, right? And it goes to show, I mean, everyone wants to see ladies' perspectives on watches. It's actually much better being a woman running a channel because you're not only getting the female audience, but of course you're getting the male audience too, right? I mean, for someone like me, ID guy, <laughs> God, I mean, this name just came out of nowhere. There was no, re I was studying industrial design and I'm a guy. So I thought, okay, cool, nice name. But as it is, it's, it's masculine, you know? So that already divides opinion. So, I mean, it's, it's funny. I, I love it. Speaking about male dominated zones. Anyway. Penny rocking a 41 mil. It wears excellently on her wrist. I would totally give up a kidney for one of these at this point in time and just get the sub done dusted. You know what? All right. Jumping next to Peter. Penny, thanks for sending this in. Send in more watches for the next show, whatever you like, and I'll continue plugging your page. I think you really deserve the attention. Uh, to Peter next with a constellation. Now, I love the story because Peter is 17, and this is his, whoops, 
look how high res this photo is too. So, so Peter is 17, and this is his first expensive watch in this category. Okay, Constellation, and it's the reference 1502.30.00, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> and yeah, I'll just hit the water and then uh, carry on with my thought around this. <clears throat> so uh, Mark has also mentioned all in her movements. That's that's the actual link. Okay, put that into the description or the search bar. Find her channel. Follow her. Okay, so this always just brings back whenever I hear the teenagers are getting into this at this stage, getting into the watch hobby. I think it's such a gift because you can learn so much. This platform has evolved incredibly over the last five years. And you can learn so much about your tastes just by watching YouTube channels at, at this point in time. And being 17, you can take in so much more information. And I always just go back to thinking, hell, if I was in high school and I was into watches, I think things would have changed quite differently, you know? And uh, really, congratulations, Peter, for picking this up. Can never go wrong with a constellation. And there's so many things to enjoy. I mean, what are they, they call it? The bullet style bracelet, right? This, this arrangement here. And very 80s, as mentioned. I think it's like a 36 mil. Just awesome. I mean, uh-oh, come back. Just going around class wearing one of these, no one who's no one at that age is really into watches, right? You're rocking a constellation that looks really killer. And maybe you spark up a conversation and, and so it goes. Uh, yeah, cool start into the hobby. Great first watch. It's awesome. It really is. Peter, thanks for sending this in. And I gave away the, uh, the reveal. Uh, I don't know if Raymond is still with us, but a... I never get this name right. Konstantin Shaikin, right? Joker. It uses ETA movements, and it's just the quirkiest. It's such a fun watch. Now, I don't know the full story. Maybe someone, I'm sure, someone knows this more than me. But uh, I don't know the full development around this watch. What am I saying? More than me. I know zip about this watch. Uh, that it came out, and it's just, actually it's been so interested and in. people are jumping on these watches because of their uniqueness super collectors are getting them because they're just so bizarre and, and fun and i don't know the story i don't know what the prices of these watches are normally read my email did i read your email raymond i don't know so much about reading the email i saved the email <laughs> you know most of the time it's just right click find the name of the watch and just drop it in move on uh so can someone please explain raymond you know this watch you own it uh Please explain the background to this a bit more for us so we can learn the deal. I love this. And it goes squint at the 345. It's so funny. So they run, it runs an ETA, I think two separate ETA movements to, to control these two components here. And the tongue, is that to do with the date? Or was that the seconds? God, I don't know. I'm so backwards with this. Oh. Uh, diamond heart club spade bezel. Yeah, there's lots of little quirks to it. And they've since released uh, Halloween editions and many others, but uh, we've we've spoken about them a lot in the past. But there's, yeah, I'd like to know more about the history of this piece and where how this intrigue began. Maybe if there's a good link to a, a brand, oh, sorry, a, an article out there that we could have a look at, that would be good. Ten thousand is that really? And it never started at that price. They've they've doubled since then. Moon phase, tongue moon phase. Okay, thanks. Thank you for that. Yeah, clowns, two crowns. Yeah, it's so funny. Like, I still don't fully understand it, but I do love how it has this quirk. You know, watches are not always meant to be serious, and it's great to see pieces that are fun. It's so nice seeing just how the eyes move around the dial, and it's, yeah, whimsical. Watches need to be whimsical too. Tongue phase. You guys are awesome. So he's Russian. Okay, I'm learning a bit more here. 7.5K retail going for nearly double secondhand. Nuts. And that's just because of the demand, right? We were all interested in the demand. He made one as a one-off, then started making it as a fun series. Uh, he could have created thousands, but kept production low. Oh, okay. And puts a lot into detailed dials. Thank you for that, Jizzy Ninja. Really appreciate that. Love your name. Uh, so yeah, really awesome radiation effect. I mean, it's great. Stunning watch. We could spend a lot of time talking about it, but is this actually carbon fiber? This looks very carbon fiber-ish. Nice piece. Charming piece. What a joker. I sure am, Russell. I sure am. Slipknot drummer. It's simply fun. Yep. As it should be. Enjoy it. Some, I, I really dig the Halloween edition. There's some crazy like jack-o'-lanterns, crazy expressions. Okay. Another shot from Raymond. Funnily enough, talking about dive watches and Doxa. Now, in the email, I did save part of this email. He mentioned, anyone, Doxa Nation, are we in the chat? 
he said that he has owned over 40 doxes in his time and these are the two he's kept so on the left we have the 300 300t caribbean and on the right the 1200t c rambler doxa is a brand one of the outliers would be called doxa a phoenix brand at this point in a way because they've just resurged and uh, they've done so much with the colors that they're doing now re-releasing models being a bit more creative in the space yeah there's lots still comments about the two i hope my I hope my stream is not like too slow on the laptop i'm missing it sorry guys uh, what band is connected to the joker so that's a good point uh, this is a leather strap and then there was a great nato that i didn't mention how cool is this nato gray black gold red raymond if you're still here with us please tell us what the straps about because this really does complete it makes this watch sing it's so funny like the frank they need to do a frankenstein one with the screws on either side of the head no right back to the doxes love the bracelet i mean this looks like a breitling bracelet gotta help me here i steve miller band oh god Steve Miller band. I oh, got it. Got it. Okay. We're talking about actual bands now. Um, right. And the chat. Don't know what's going on here. Talking about uh, Regained 2002. Steve Miller band. Is that actually the name of a band? Special Ed NATO. That's good. Thanks for that. Best offset logo. Yeah. Proper Cousteau wash. Eric Bell. And the best thing is that his son wears this too. I mean, his son is also wearing doxes at this point in time, which is great. I love that pass on. Sad that they're not wearing the Plo Profs anymore. You know, the Plo Prof is the real, I, I feel like the Plo Prof is a real, that's actually a good debate. Which do you prefer, the Doxa or the Plo Prof as the, the Cousteau watch? I've always seen Cousteau with the Plo Prof and thought, yeah, that's the way. But I'm sure most would probably agree this is the real Cousteau model. Speaking about the type, there are few that do it better. This whole idea of setting it, it just works so nicely. And this watch has been worn. They have been worn and enjoyed. So I look forward to talking about Doxa as a brand in general in this reissue space this this category not reissue but you know resurgent space that you should be looking at over a lot of other makers because you just you just get to enjoy it you know you get to enjoy the variety and the diversity out there uh yes on the band pilot generic bracelet i don't know how i got that one right it looks kind of kind of brightling pilot model i'm talking about this bracelet on the right here for anyone looking kind of brightling beads of rice is just the classic Okay, I've got a few more going on here. Next to another Raymond. And, and Blue Shirt is a big proponent of Doxa. He has a 300T. I think he has this exact model, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so I don't know if this is the same Raymond. Is it the same Raymond? I really couldn't tell you. No, it's not. No, 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 it's not. This is, so <clears throat> I'm going to get this right. Raymond has an Instagram. Let me start with his Instagram. S-A- watch bro i don't know if he's in the chat get onto his instagram if you're south african got to stick together because i don't know many south africans who are into watches but uh this is taken at if anyone knows i'll give you a couple of seconds maybe eric bell will be able to guess where this was taken uh it's in cape town and it's a super tourist attraction spot uh any guesses anyway it's a paddy turtle we we do dig this watch for what it does Excellent value for money proposition and just a great looking piece. It's amazing how many Seikos we featured on the show. Anyone want to take a wild guess where this place is? And I'm going to refresh my laptop because I think it is going really slow. The internet is not my friend. And I'm getting an ad to my own live stream. How funny is that? Simon's Town, Eric Bell says, hmm, close, close. Anything about the anything about the place itself? It's a beach. Beach is the last word. The beach. Very good, Russell. You're close. Iowa. Tom says. So this is called Boulder's Beach. Okay, and uh, fairy penguins. Boulder's Beach is known for its penguin population. Okay, and it's the funniest thing. They just they live there in their thousands. And I've been here a couple of times in my in my life, and they're, they're amazing. Then they nest on the beach themselves, and eggs are sh spread all along the the sea as they kick away the duds. Um, looks like Coney Island. So yeah, Boulder's Beach is one of the big tourist attractions in Cape Town. If you want to just see penguins just chilling all year round, uh, that's it. Would recommend. Cape Town's a, an amazing little place. For anyone who doesn't know, I, I grew up there. Spent 21 years of my life in, in Africa, good old Africa. Uh, 
looks like Coney Island. I love it. I love it. It's great to still have you here, Megan. Absolute pleasure having you still. Um, always be able to travel again, George. So Raymond is based in Cape Town, and I think he did send in a Yemmer uh, Sherpa graph, or it was a Navigraph. Oh, I can never get it right. Sherpa chronograph. Yemmer chronograph, excuse me. Uh, and this is his Seiko at the beach. Absolute pleasure. Raymond, I don't know if you're watching. You might catch up with us later. Um, I thought there were people, but I'm from the UK. That's so funny, Andy. Yeah, no, these are these are penguins. They ain't people. So it's really cool. Cape Town, nice tourist destination. Go and enjoy some good weather. I'm so jealous of my friends. It's like 37 degrees there at the moment, Celsius. Right on. Go and carry on moving. Go to the Falklands. That works as well. <laughs> okay, I've got to carry on through. So next up to Rene. Raymond, always a pleasure. I need to follow your Instagram when I get the chance. Uh, so Rene, who we know as Moose Man, I don't know if he's in the chat, but he mentioned that Christmas was kind to him this year, and he picked up a Black Bay 36, a great, great alternative uh, to the standard Explorer that we see all too often. And there's lots to enjoy here. I love the smiling self-winding. Doesn't it look like a face to you, a smile? Oh, it's so cute. It is so cute. I mean, just squint your eyes and look at the 10 and the 2, and it looks like a smiley face. That's so funny. Mentioning about Toto, Rains in Africa, and Afrikaans. Yeah, it sure does. I don't, I don't know the origins of that song, but it never was popular in Africa. Got to say, it was very commercialized. I've, I never, it was never a song that came on the radio much, as far as I know. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Everyone thinks that Africa is this backwards land, but there's lots of uh, agriculture and lots of real world big cities in it too so uh, yeah it's funny i love the misconceptions of africa i was actually watching a documentary on it today um black bay 36 this is such a great starter watch in this category i think wouldn't it be nice to see this dial as a snowflake arrangement snowflake uh, numerals everywhere around there so i say plots um many get into this hobby by picking up this watch first in fact many explorer 39 owners get this watch as the precursor before jumping into uh, the, the the Explorer itself. It's a very good way. I think as a way to experience a watch before pulling the trigger on something that is, she's like four times the price, basically. No, three times the price, maybe. And this is a good way to get started. Rose logo. Sadly, this one doesn't have it. Real pity. I just wish they could bring it back. Hell, it's so frustrating. You know, as a creative, you want to just inject some dna into things and then put your foot down and say no keep it the way it should be but of course you're not and uh, it's difficult to get your point heard uh about south africans i don't know what's going on in the chat i'll i'll get back there now um so renee thank you for sending this i don't know if you're still with us i probably put you to sleep by now next we're jumping to richard how cool is this now i don't know if this is modern or if this is vintage. i think Someone help me out. I think this is modern, but it's it's a Longines Heritage Military Marine National. I have I can honestly say I've never seen this model before. I mean, this feels like a vintage piece, Fabric Suisse. I, I don't know if this is in fact a vintage or not. Someone please help me out. The case looks too new. I feel like this is a reissue, or maybe I'm completely wrong. The condition looks absolutely stellar. It's new. I know it says okay. Monty Python, oh, what am I missing here? Tudor, Tudor Rose, About South Africans, Rose logo. Uh, have you ever seen the sketch from Spitting Image? I have not. Spitting Image, no, I haven't. Uh, I'm trying to scroll up and catch up. So this is actually, it's a, it's a reissue. Okay, thank you. I have never seen this model before. Maybe I've just missed something, you know, with the reissues that come out. I love this dial. It's just so true to the 1940s with that, that uh, minute track that runs around it. Whenever you think the minute track looks like a ruler, you can almost guarantee that it's a watch out of the out of the forties. Um, very Type Twenty typeface. Yeah, I'm still watching, st still working on the watches of the French Armed Forces. It's such a long one. I can't tell you. It's going to be like forty damn minutes long because there's so many little little variances within each model line. We're talking about the Type Twenties and the pocket watches and the, just in the Marine National space, and then you jump to just the Tudor snowflake and that history and Blancpain and so it goes, you know, it's an awesome piece, really is gorgeous and uh, French watchmaking, miss it, miss it, miss the styling. Uh, yeah, so awesome looking watch, never seen it before, 
But I mean, look, you check, it does have a sapphire crystal. So that's one way. The milky ring, didn't even notice. Pencil hands. It's just so true to form what a real heritage watch should look like. 1940s were quite modern. Yeah, I agree. Like the logo, looks painted. Yeah. Okay, Richard, thanks for sending this. I've got a motor. Got to keep moving on through. Contestant to the Smiths, Andreas. Ooh, the, the what's it called? The Air Ministry. Mm, I would agree. I gave it to my dad and he wears it all day on a, a Tessuflex mesh. I actually need to get a photo. I'll get a photo of his wrist for the next show to show you. Uh, okay, next to Rob. Rob L. Why did I call you Rob L? Okay, hold on a second. This caught my attention. Armor light. Now, this is tritium tubes. Love those orange accents. This is called the bronze T25 tritium. Also love the watch, Megan, that long jean. There's some gorgeous, gorgeous military-inspired pieces. I think they less is more in the field watch space, I believe. Uh, right, carrying on. So, T25 tritium. What an amazing model. I, Armor light. I mean, I feel like this is an off-brand that this brand develops like... I, I wouldn't be surprised if they develop bulletproof vests. Maybe I'm barking up the wrong tree. But uh, <laughs> where are the orange accents, Tom asks. I don't know. In a few places, I'll say. In a few places. Uh, the knurling on the bezel is great. I love that feature. It's just built for purpose. 200 meters, really nice dial. Seeing not only tritium tubes, but the full numeral arrangement, the, uh, the sword hands. Yeah. I got to say, it's a real machine. He did send in a shot of the loom, but I, for some reason, didn't save it. This was the best at sunset, which I thought was quite nice since we we're trying to get environments and in all those zones. Yeah, it's really cool. And look how large this, this uh, tube is on top. It's great. It is so great. There's lots to take in. Huh? You can always be surprised. I mean, these shows surprise me. I don't see half the things until these shows arrive. And then it just takes me down a new avenue to look at all these other brands that I've never heard of before. Quite amazing. This looks like something very KTM inspired, don't you say? Uh, Megan's saying great watches. I think she's pretty familiar with these. Um, Benny Hats from Crossroads. Oh, God, I don't know what's going on. A true military brand. It's a true military brand, Michael. I've never heard of the name. Armor. I feel like Armor Light is a bulletproof vest manufacturer. Maybe someone can help me. But uh, yeah, awesome. Orange accents, orange highlights, completes it. Love the strap. Everything about it's awesome. Okay, Electric Avenue. Yeah, I really don't know. Talking about cross, Are we talking about guitars again and Crossroads as in Eric Clapton or uh, Robert Johnson? Right, moving on. Marathon, another great example, David. This probably competes directly with them, right? In virtually, virtually every way. Okay, to Russell next. Now, I didn't save. I think I've only saved one shot from Russell for the end of the show. I did. And he sent in a handful of others. I don't know if Russell's still with us or if I have put him to sleep. But we are going to enjoy a handful of peculiar models. And at the very end, we'll be featuring uh, a Patek that has been discontinued in this space, which is worth focusing on. Right. So let's start with Bread and Butter, <laughs> a watch that we sort of just nonchalantly say, nah, it's cool. It's okay. I mean, what kind of... Idiot, you think? Yeah. Anyway, so someone got a one one six five hundred LN. This is the LN, right? Panda Daytona. Spoken about this watch so so much, and there's lots to appreciate. I think it's still a watch that I'm interested in knowing what the prices of these watches are like now, and where the demand is, and how they're climbing. And uh, <laughs> everyone's talking about Clapton now. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just talking to myself here. Uh, Panda aesthetic, that layout, and. For the Zenith video, I'm going to be comparing this side by side and discussing the quirks and the nuances there, which is going to be fun. I've arranged half of it already for Tuesday. Uh, so it's a charmer. I think he still has this watch in his collection. Russell, if you're with us, Earth to Russell. Slow hand. Yeah. So nice piece. Talk about reading text. If you ever like run out of stuff to read on the toilet, this will do it for you. Kind of like War and Peace. Um, so Ninja saying it will be interesting to see if the demand goes down after the new Zenith. I mean, that's the real talk of the day, right? The, the question. I am looking forward to discussing that a bit more and the aesthetics. I, I, it's funny. I need to think a bit more about it. Over the course of tomorrow, I'm going to study some more articles and look at some YouTube videos, try and get an opinion around the arrangement there. But I mean, they really are trying to attack this watch, aren't they? And uh, the 4130 caliber is perfect. I'm not well versed enough. 
about the caliber itself and the the it's a 70 hour power reserve i think this caliber has been around for a long time so it's great to see that it's still motoring and everyone's loving it yeah i need to learn more about the caliber of this watch compared to the el primero 36 i mean i love the 10 second counter it's awesome what are my first thoughts on the zenith mark great question my first thoughts weren't uh, didn't jump out at me i the first thing that came to mind honestly i said you know we've heard of zenith daytonas but this is ridiculous that was the first literally the first thing that came to mind when i saw it um and then just broke down i had a good look at uh, just the references like the a386 it felt like a lot more inspired by the a386 small things that i don't really get like the black bezel to me stands out a bit uh compared to this the simpler dial i've done a few redesigns in places so it's going to be fun to talk through those but i think on the whole what you're getting compared to i mean it's it's a great argument talking about how and we've got a zenith at the very end of the show but uh i'll keep this on for the time um it's great seeing how the watch is priced and what you're getting i love the feature of the bezel the whole 10 second counter is just so much more practical than attacking meter it could be as good as a dive time bezel in this i mean we're talking about bezels being outstanding features the 10 second counter bezel is something that really stamps zenith's name down um but i look forward to talking about it more i'm definitely not going to ramp on got lots of thoughts to share eventually i don't know uh moving on next let's go to a completely different zone nefarion if you're still here with us uh scuderia f430 i think it's one of the best i mean talking about this car so we were talking about sports watches and russell sent this in saying talk you know it's just such a good theme this is his absolute darling he loves this watch he wears it everywhere 5370 oh i'm never going to get it right but it's a split chronograph it's just the truest such a refined variant of the patek chrono and the the f430 i mean uh who's the designer again frank stevenson he made some real icons the fiat 500 the f430 i mean they stood out so nicely and this car i mean it's naturally aspirated right naturally aspirated v8 absolute uh, one of the most beautiful ferraris i think in the modern lineup uh when the the 458 came out didn't speak to me as much i think the f430 is just feels so just timeless in its in its aesthetic in its approach yeah it's awesome hey that's my wrist shot nefarian yeah yeah so russell i don't know if you're still here with us you can debate with russell scuderia spider yeah it's awesome really is nice love game on top yeah so this is the, i think we only have one of these shots of this piece but we can appreciate we've spoken about the 5370 often on these shows and carbon fiber kind of textile strap uh the ferion ferion's awesome he's a real gem uh it's great it is great we're not done yet though now russell did have a sky dweller at one stage um and i think mark if you're still here with us he is still in the chat mark it's one in the morning mark how can you still be awake um you have this watch now and russell owning this at, at 42 he said it was just a bit too big a bit too monstrous but this is the most in demand sky dweller at the moment right i think i don't know help me help me out but it is an awesome piece and russell did let this one go if i'm not mistaken there's a few others in this lineup that he did let go uh luke sky dweller that's so funny you guys you guys are your one-liners i wish i was in the chat just thinking off the cuff like that i've got to somehow run a ship here um right fluted bezel in 1080p i mean it looks so good right check it out that is such a good point it's it's like you can almost feel it's three-dimensional how crazy is that what an, who commented that eh, hey, hey. very good like how i said your name there so he loves the color felt it was too big sold back to my ad yeah and there's lots of talk about uh, the sub dial and how people would prefer it if there just wasn't this open end and if you had the window i think it kind of works on this model though it does have its own the originals with the white didn't look very good but when it matches the color of the dial it looks looks good <laughs> a snort from the audience okay so moving on next russell now russell began his watch collecting journey with ulysses nardan U ulysses nardan excuse me now i can never get this right now this is an anniversary it's an 1846 it's something like a, a 200 year anniversary i don't know just help me out here russell if you can but it's very much true to its roots of being a marine chronometer that's the whole idea that's how i summed it up in the description i mean that's how they all that's how they got their footing uh power reserve arrangement here 
sub date and this is enamel i think it's, is it i think it's an enamel dial and there's so many features to it uh blue shirt saying three hours time for another shot you know what i really only have a drop left sadly again ladies and gentlemen glenn morangi la santa do it try it out it is absolutely amazing so yeah, I don't know if Russell's here. The 50th anniversary from 96, one of three made, 150th. It's a beautiful model. I don't know if you still have it. I'm pretty sure you do. Um, so yeah, uh, before Russell got into Pateks and Lungas, he collected UN and he had like 10 at one stage, I think he told me. Awesome model, one of three made. He does like the rare and unique pieces in this category. Uh, we're not done yet though. What is the case time? I think it's about a 40, no? Yeah, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. I mean, marine chronometers, they deserve so much more attention. That whole aesthetic, it's just it just speaks so true to its, its original design intent. Uh, right, to Russell's last submission in this US, UN space. I don't know what this is called, and I always struggle. What is this in the background? Is this steering wheel, coffee cup? What is the name of this? It's chronometer. That really sums it up. Thank you, Ulysses Nodden. Just like you, rare and unique to ferry on. Oh, thanks. 38 mil in platinum awesome so this piece i don't it's a diver but it has a large date it's full it's a full annual calendar saturday february 2019 the date sub seconds i don't know if you still have this watch wave bezel un makes some cool stuff oh, what was the model i've been looking at this is that the diver chronograph that un released recently i think it's like 44 mils and it looks similar to this great piece now jim says the best show no it's not it's I, I, I cannot. I, that's one thing is I cannot thank everyone enough for sending these, and I try my best to. I, at this point, after twenty-two episodes, it feels like it's just repeating the same exercise. But if it wasn't for you sending these in, the show would be nothing. And it's it's crazy how these shows have taken off, and people are so interested, and I love it. The variety just keeps me coming back. Uh, the presentation is always a lot of fun too. It's such a quirky watch. I mean, perpetual now sold. Okay very bright yeah tom i agree not done yet we're going to samra so russell your last piece the last watch you sent in will be saved for the end because it's worth addressing in a moment uh samra is coming up next love a bit of blue it's a subtle blue it's like you know just a little bit of blue not too much uh jumping to samra with another seiko turtle oops magic mouse samra you've sent some amazing shots in now this is a recent pickup i think many of us are just jumping on the seiko bandwagon now right i'm the first my first seiko I picked up two weeks ago and now you know we're all seeing this happening brighton beach brooklyn uh the roar of the tiger i do like your, your username there so what is the reference of this we're talking about is it a, it's not a say of the ocean generally the blue always has some kind of ocean ocean link to it um Andrea says, if it isn't broken, why fix it? The show. Yeah, I guess. I guess, right? It seems to be working. People still seem to be enjoying it. So, I mean, that's the joy. Uh, yeah, do love the blue. And the way they address the gradient of the blue, I like. Look at the bezel. Very light for the first 20. And then that gets slightly darker as we get to the last 40 at the back there. And I think there's some gradient to the dial itself. And just texture. I mean, we notice <clears throat> kind of adopt the, the Nautilus slash aqua terra texture to the dial where these has these horizontal slats but it's not actually fully horizontal they're actually staggered and they look like they've it's been cut at different it's interesting right seiko has the weirdest quirks i can tell you that much uh with their approach in the prospects line this has a 4r 36 movement if that helps anyone so the reference is srp c91 thanks samurai uh looks great 15 minutes past the hour i'm <laughs> talking about hiding the date window yeah the day date is something that does divide opinion in the space for sure i agree uh okay got to carry on sam ray thanks for this how long have we been going for three hours five minutes doing pretty good not done yet we've got some good stuff in a moment actually this is great stuff in general uh so now we have a porsche design how is this this comes in from sai sai i hope i'm getting your name right so iwc porsche design reference 3551 compass ur moon phase so compass ur as in watch moon phase how cool is this pvd case i don't know where you're based cyber what an amazing location that is gorgeous 
I mean, I see, I see this looks kind of Italian. Help me out. This kind of looks like Italian rooftops. I don't know Europe very well, as most of you. I mean, I've made a butchering Spanish steps, and I was speaking about Spain, even though it's supposed to be in Rome, right? How awesome is this piece? Porsche Design. I'm going to make a video about them. They deserve it. Uh, they came up with the craziest. I mean, I always just think about the, the IWC Ocean 2000. Are talking about Seiko QC with, with the bezel alignment? I think I missed. Uh, yeah, it's great. Really is a nice looking piece. So we have dividing lines that run through it, which is kind of true to the, the Junghans kind of format, you know. Um, we have a black date window, which is nice and clean. We have, I don't, this is a tritium dial. So this is pretty old school. Moon phase. Don't you love how this moon phase has been done? It's not in your face, under the radar, and it just slightly shows itself when it's time. Pencil hands, red accent there. This kind of reminds me, looking at the case and the bracelet integration of a um, IWC Da Vinci. Have you ever seen an IWC Da Vinci before? Kind of similar. This isn't IWC. What am I saying? See what happens at the three hour mark. This isn't bloody IWC. So I think they kind of got the inspiration from the Da Vinci style models. They are so peculiar. Okay, uh, catching up with the chat. Some people do Lord of the Rings trilogy marathons. I do ID Guy marathons. I like that's, Alexander. That's so funny. I love that. That is hilarious. Um, I've done it. I, I love me a good Lord of the Rings. Eric Bell's laughing. I mean, that's great. That really is hilarious. Uh, you have to watch the director's cuts of those films. Four hours a piece. Yep, it's the way. Some it's amazing what what that what those films did for cinema for. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I love them. Catching up. Actually, love this. Steve says, yeah, pure German. Feels like it, right? Again, I'm wondering if they got their inspiration from the Da Vinci with this case format. And notice something else. What is this notch doing taken out of the top here? And the same at the bottom. I have never seen this before. Quirks. IWC Porsche design. Well worth investigating a bit more. Okay. Carrying on, Sai, thank you for sending this. One of the real outliers of the show. To Slatsman next. And, oh, this is good. This is good. And I'll leave us on the screen for a second and hit the water. Right. So Philip says, looks like the Hegau, he, I'm going to butcher that name, Hegau region near Lake Constance. You know better than me, Philip. Amazing though. I see these terracotta roofs and think, hmm, kinda kinda Italian. I think I'm completely wrong. Maybe it's Greek for all I know. And it could be Greek. Uh, so this is this is a nice piece. Um the Seamaster ETNZ edition. Now, this is a regatta timer, it's a yachting chronograph. I think it's a 44 mil in the space. And he picked this up at the end of last year. There is a lot to take in here. It's one of the best Seamaster chronos in this category. I love how they've done the totalizers with the regatta time that's split between the five minute mark. As most of you probably know, you time five minutes between stops when you uh, are lining yourself up to begin the regatta. So there's some functionality to it and it's such a cool aesthetic. Um, speaking of, look how the use of color has worked here. Red for start, red for the timer, red for the, the running hand and red for the hour hand. It's interesting. And of course, this is your running seconds at the base here. So I think even Tim Mosso mentioned that this is probably one of the best Seamaster chronos in this category. Kind of a diving chrono, you could call it as well. But there's lots to enjoy. Just the right amount of red accents. Uh, this does have a slate gray dial, uh, rubber strap. I think it's it's not a ceramic case. I think it's PVD coated. I don't know. Maybe it's titanium. I think it's a titanium case. Yeah, there's lots to it. And all sorts going on in the chat. As Sam Ray says, big chrono, massive on me. Yeah, hammered, hammered dial. I don't know what that means. Maybe it is. I don't know. Is it titanium? I think it is, Forbin. I do believe it is. So it's really interesting. It's got this blend of sports and dress. It's not new. I think it came out in like 2010 or 12 or uh, glad it didn't go under the radar. Is that, is that, was that me mentioning? Did I say that? I don't know. Uh, it's great. Slatsman, thanks for sending this to us. I don't know if you're with us in the chat, but um, it's a joy. These shows are always a joy. To Stefan next. Whoa. I've got a date just. Date just 16030, which is a Berthier model from 1983. Now, these just did date just this time period. 
did date just so interestingly with the double double arrangement of the batons at the dial uh the beautiful engine turn bezel it doesn't look like a fluted bezel i think this is actually engine turn excuse the the resolution it's probably me with my uh, saving sometimes the images don't save in full quality but uh yeah engine turn bezel arrangement very clean sharp nice size again berthia being 1983 really cool and uh we're still doing pretty well for time three hours ten i'm not even i'm not even uh, slightly asleep yet it's great it's great how's everyone doing in the chat am i missing anything guys are debating amongst themselves about about watches and references and air mentioning that it's eta 7753 movement interesting watch something to pay attention to i'd recommend looking at the uh, the watch box discussion on the, the it's called the etnz which is to do with uh new zet no, no, no. it's something to do with the emirates new zealand yachting race i think do they, they sail from emirates to new zealand i think as a regatta across the world those are incredible those those yachts are just unbelievable i love the technology that goes into them not that i'd be able to last on one though me and my sea legs i if you want to ever have someone chum for fish i'm the one to do it when it comes to going out put me on a boat put me on a speedboat I'm great while it's moving stationary i am the best chummer make sure you give me a full english breakfast and i'll be good to go um right bobby legs i struggle to host a one hour stream oh, bobby legs thanks for joining in man really uh i don't know how i do it i really don't know how i do it i mean i've always been very talkative you know, being the only child you have to keep yourself entertained and i guess uh, it just seemed to work for this format it's funny I'd love to have some guests on so I can actually listen to someone else talk. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a joy. So, Steve, uh, Stefan, thank you for setting this in. I've got to move on next to Steve. This watch, this watch is an outlier. I've never heard of this or seen this before. Check this thing out. Armand Nicolette, Tre Tremelan. This brand has been around since 1874. And amazing really amazing sometimes these pieces just come out of nowhere uh oh no it's a pleasure really uh we're not finished yet we've got another i'd say 20 more watches to look 20 more photos to look at some great stuff i mean time traveler he still has more references here uh and sam ray saying that you and jory goodman would be very entertaining i think we would yeah we'd be shouting at each other from across the show it'd be great uh yeah i mean there's so many personalities on this platform and i think it's awesome there's there's a lot to take in i mean i don't like to think of myself as a personality the whole idea of being being anonymous and being nobody is that i could be anybody and i kind of like that idea of not being a face on the platform it has its pros and cons i would say it has lots more cons uh you're not as relatable but at the same time you can trust me on my word because that's all i have so it's pretty good uh yeah, I do love it. Do love these shows. Like a shrimp boat, Alexander. Crayfishing. That was my jam back in the day. Go out crayfishing and catch the biggest. Crayfishing are basically lobster, right? Catching the biggest possible. I would chum both sides of the boat too. Um, I'm getting loaded. Roar of the tiger. <laughs> oh, and I'm finished the whiskey. It's unfortunate. And Adrian. I'd love to chat to Adrian, though. I really would. I mean, I started watching him from day one in the kitchen. That was awesome. So, yeah, check this piece out. We've got Arabics at the quarters. It just speaks my language, you know. Day-date complication at the base. You never see this arrangement. I don't understand what this is, a J09, but also a great shot of the movement. It's kind of cushion case in a way, stepped, step dial. We look at the back. How awesome is this? I mean, five atmosphere water resistance. I don't know what movement it uses someone can maybe point it out but it's an outlier another outlier brand that i have never heard of maybe you haven't either and uh yeah you just take it all in armand and nicolette been around since 1874 do the maths do do the maths to, I, don't know, I don't know what's going chum for great whites and can't buy i never did luckily i've never experienced a great white encounter eric i've had friends that have uh oof, gotta say the water in South Africa is so scary. Oh God, especially off off the Cape, you can't see a thing. You can't. It's oh, I fear for my friends. I've got lots of I've got lots of friends who surf every day, and they have a time. Speaking of surf and yachting, Steve, thank you for sending this in. Absolute, such a crazy looking watch. I love the details to the dial. 
jumping to Stephen with a yacht master. He got married this year, last year, and he sends in a reference 126622. This is a real gem, platinum bezel. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I've got so many friends who surf, and I fear for their lives because the, the great white population there are just insane. People say that sharks are gentle giants and that, no, not the great whites. Sorry, they aren't. They want to kill you. Like, they don't care. Uh, it's, it's funny. Uh, if there's some great videos, like, check out GoPro. They did some awesome coverage. They found some awesome coverage of just how they work in the murky water. I mean, their their claim to fame, you don't know the great white. They're black on top and white underneath. So you can't see them when they're underneath you, and that's how they attack. If you've seen the seals, you know, when they jump out the water and catch the seals, that's all in South Africa. It's crazy. Uh, right. Sorry, I went on a shark debate there. So talking about the blue dial, the red hand, we've spoken about these pieces often, and a real outlier, one that deserves more attention. It's the dressy diver in this category here. Uh, there are a thousand enhanced by alone, Eric says. Wow. Had a very good have a very good friend who had a holiday house there. And the whales, Eric, you've never seen whales so close. Amazing. His house was right on the shore. And I think mainly southern right whales in pods would come right to your doorstep. It's just incredible. Got so many fond memories of Hans Bay, especially. Uh, oh no, hit the wrong button. Gonna get there in a second. So yacht master, red accents, red highlights. I don't know why I'm talking about ocean life all of a sudden it's funny talking about watches for three hours eventually you want to deviate and talk about other stuff for dining underwater shane i love it um alexander says if i was a shark seeing a human with this watch too i would eat the human claim the seiko <laughs> that's funny uh cornelia thank you for the super chat thank you for joining in for the rest of you who are watching there's almost 150 of you still listening in this is amazing it's just amazing doing these shows sorry magic mouse the condition of this watch is beautiful. The bezel is what makes it sing. I do love the pronounced elements here. Unique in this zone. Okay, carrying on through. Stephen, thank you for this. Moving on next to another. Whoa, that's cool. If you double press the person's name, it zooms in. Another model in this category that we've seen once or twice. Uh, it's a, another explorer in the snow, as it deserves to be in the environment. Uh, now we've featured like, I think we've featured at least four Explorer Polars in the snow before. Uh, so it's good to see that we are consistent running these shows, no? <laughs> and I titled this Exploring. And Tillman, as for the discreet advice on the shadow, I say jump on it. I think as far as an outlier in your collection, do it. It's something between us and the, the email. So let's see, uh, there are a pair of Orcas, uh, one port and starboard, Apex Predators here now. Really? Are we talking about... So I'm going to try and catch this better. So Eric says there are a pair of orcas there. One port, one starboard. There are apex predators there now. We're talking about Australia. We're talking about South Africa. Oh, oh hold on a sec. So, so they're nicknamed port and starboard, and they're based in... South. Okay. I've been hearing that they've been chowing the sharks. Good for them. Hell. Yeah, orcas, killer whales are just as bad as sharks, really. They can be super aggressive. Uh, they look all playful and gorgeous, but hell, they can also... I have friends who go paddleboarding and they get interfered with by all sorts, even bloody dolphins. Right, so another explorer. I love the setting in the snow. Tillman, if you're a gent, I don't know if you're in the chat, goes by the name of, of Tal. Um, the white dial makes it look even bigger. Yeah, I mean, 42 mils. This was one of the first, I've said this thousands of times, the first modern sports Rolex that I've experienced was this. And the 42 mil size just felt too much for me personally. But as far as a polar explorer goes, I mean, it's a real, it does its job. It's a real monster. Ooh, guess what we're jumping on next? Complete outlier. 1016, a beautiful 1016. Uh, and Alexander says, if I'm ever buying Rolex, this is it. I love that it's its its own thing in this category. You don't see white dial models in this space. Uh, you can remove the Cyclops, yeah, for sure. But that is their territory. Yeah, of course, Mark. The ocean, similar to the, the Sahara, the Savannah, you, you go in there, you're risking your life. You know, you're going into their territory. I can tell you, I've spent more time in, in the bush than in the sea. I can tell you that much. Uh, the, ski, the sea freaks me out. Uh, jumping next to Thomas. Okay, Tillman, thank you for sending this in. Stunning. How cool is this? A berthier 
1976 1016 i mean this i could end the show with uh it's just amazing eric bell says to nefer and watch blackfish that's terrifying i went to orlando and i went to SeaWorld, and it was yo crazy i think shamu was still there back then in the in the early 90s it was 99 i went there um but yeah for sure mark the ocean it's their space same as going out into into the game park and you stumble across a pride of lions just chilling under a tree <laughs> uh, tell you what you really you can you lose your your lunch pretty quick how beautiful is the condition of this so everyone's just going yeah i know i know these shows they aren't they're arranged alphabetically and i can't keep all the good stuff for the beginning so we have the, the people who stay behind get to see the good stuff as well as the bad it's always a joy the condition of this look at the lugs this watch looks brand spanking new look at the dial i think if megan is still with us i hope she is she would agree how clean this piece is the tritium has aged so well so evenly on the leather strap it's superb and this just feels so casino royale i mean this is the way uh this should have been the james bond watch and you know casino royale should have been sean connery's film and it just fits the purpose fits the build mm. yeah i'd love to own a 1016 that could also be an exit watch for me in the rolex category uh stevie's saying stick to watches i'm a little off with the sharks i am a bit yeah true three and a half hours you do eventually your mind does wonder uh it's awesome I, the, the things the things that just speak to me about this we've, the 1016 if you want to know a channel that's overhyped the 1016 it's me i've spoken about it like at least eight different occasions the typeface on this dial just can't be matched it's just so gorgeous the rounded elements of the this is the perfect example to look at the rounded elements of the type how it pairs with the, the roundness of the case just speaks such so well together one of the most elegant sports watches of all time i've said it i've said it it's great it is so great. Uh, anyway, can't keep enjoying this. Got to keep moving on. So, so we just had Thomas. Now we're jumping to Tom. Speaking of great whites, God damn, no. here is a great white that we were speaking about earlier. Uh, this is the white dial that has become very popular. Uh, and Megan says, "Perfect." I knew you'd like this. It's just oh, I enjoy it. the case is absolutely sublime. I can't get over it. How sharp it is. I could just stare at it for hours. I would love a frog foot. That's the one gripe. Frog foot, and then it's all over. Game over. Right. Another Seamaster. This is the second professional in the space. White dial. Gotta love it. And this looks to be a vineyard. Help me out. Maybe not. Could be an apple orchard, or it could be. I don't know. But this is from Tom, and it's also his first submission. And there were quite a couple of you out there. If any of you are still watching, there were quite a few of you who sent in first submissions for this show, and I appreciate it so much. It's always great having a new time uh, joiner coming in, and what a way to start. I feel like this is a vineyard. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Kind of out of season. <laughs> a grape between uh, the gape between the date wheel and the hold on the wheel and the face. Yeah, I do like the fact that they fill up the space with a plot. It's nice to see it instead of just the date window there. It's a great size. There's lots to talk about. I also just dig the red accents. I mean, he's matched the sleeve with the red accents on the watch itself. And yeah, yeah, he's talking about it for ages. 1016 is awesome though. A forest of sticks, Russell. Oh, aren't we uncultured? We are so uncultured here. I mean, I'm, I grew up next to a bloody vineyard. I should know that this is a vineyard. It looks too, I mean, the ones that I had, the ones that were next door to me were three times the length of this. So I don't know what I'm looking at here. I could be completely wrong. Someone maybe help me. A Mick in Florida. Welcome. Great to have you here. We've been running the show for three and a half hours. So you've definitely come at a point where I am on the verge of losing all sense of space and time. And Thomas says it's his favorite color. Yeah, I agree. The white, the, this whole effect, this has always been the one that's attracted me the most. I was so happy when they brought this out. Uh, 2018, I think. I don't know. I don't know. It's been a while. Um, yeah, so many aspects to enjoy and appreciate. And it's just an outlier in the space when it comes to white dial Seamasters. You don't see many of them. Moving on. So Thomas to Tom and now Tommy. How's this? Jeez, these guys know their watches. Okay, so let's just, let's just clarify. Thomas sends in a birth year 1016. Absolutely stunning. Tom sends in 
what, the best modern Seamaster, I think, personally, in this category of just colorway. Great. Tommy sends in SLA037. Now, in my email, I replied to this email, and I said, I thought I'd be the only one wearing the the 62 MAS inspired watch for a change. This is quite, if anyone knows, now I've been learning about these watches, if anyone knows anything about the Seiko references in this category, this is under the Prospects line, but it, I think it uses a Grand Seiko based movement, if I'm not wrong. And it's an almost direct tribute to the 62 MAS, the first dive watch that the, the brand ever made. And uh, the 037 denotes the blue arrangement so let me just i'll fly back up to the top and show you the 143 this is the layman's version this is the watch that you get to experience the aesthetic it's a bit more of the modern take right it's a it's a quarter of the price of the sla hold on getting back to tommy the sla 037 so you see the arrangement 62 mas and now you have this it looks so cool I'm digging it. it. Has a ceramic bezel. It's a skin diver. Talking about the Glasuta that we saw earlier, same case format. And I kind of love the fact that this watch is technically a Blancpain Bathyscaphe from back in the day. Uh, it's pretty funny that they just kind of copied the original Bathyscaphe design and used it as theirs, and it's become their staple in this category. And then they jumped to the Willard, and that evolved. It's an awesome looking watch. Now he he owns Rolexes and Blancpain. He tells me in his email. And he says that the quality and the finishing, this watch is like a third of the price of them. He says the quality, the build, the movement itself, just absolute groundbreaking. So worth listening to these collectors' opinions. And the color just sings. It looks so good. Okay. For those 137 of you who are still watching, we're about to jump to more watch porn and photography. Let's enjoy ourselves. We're jumping to some more shots from Time Traveler. And uh, this one is so much better, the blue one. Yeah. Can you feel me? Are we singing? Oh, what's this? is that Mike and the Mechanics, Hans? That is so funny. It is Mike and the Mechanics, no? <laughs> okay. Time traveler next. Right. Oh, exhibit saying the divided marker of the 12 gives a great dimension to the face. I do prefer the divided marker. I really do. And the color is perfect. It's really nice, navy. Okay. Got a mode. I'll be sitting here talking about this watch for ages. You've been running for three, for three hours, not three and a half hours now. Right, right. Time Traveler. Here we go. Now, Time Traveler was the cover photo child of the week, and he sent in a couple more shots to enjoy. Again, if you're just joining in, um, what is this? What is the handle? A week on the wrist. On the wrist. Follow that handle on Instagram, and you'll see his photography. Beautiful stuff. Now, Megan knows her Moses pretty well. This looks like, I've, I've never seen this before, but it looks like a tribute to Rolls-Royce and to Bentley. Could someone please clarify? This is some kind of flagship model in their line. But the photography is amazing. We featured a few of these in the past, but uh, he has a very varied, a very varied collection. <laughs> We've reached that time. Uh, and gray blue, are we talking about the, the Seiko again? I have no idea what they call this. Look it up, it's the SLA037. There's all sorts of references there. Um, yeah, Moser Endeavor, just beautiful. From the Eternal Grave. There's some more, though. How is this for a close-up shot? To appreciate it even better. It's just amazing. I did. I decided to save some of these. Russell, I think you've been outdone in this category for this for this show, at least. Uh, Time Traveler gets a watch every week to review and to photograph, and uh, it's kind of living my dream in many ways. I don't know what the Rolls-Royce and Bentley thing's about, though. I've never seen this partnership before. RREC. I have absolutely no idea. Maybe someone maybe someone can help out. But uh, Rolls-Royce and Bentley, don't... Uh, hold on. <clears throat> Does Rolls-Royce also use VW engines? Maybe they do. Ah, help me out. Really don't know. And what's the middle symbol? It says RR and then EC. Rolls-Royce something company? I'm really, I'm lost. Do not know. I should have looked it up. Maybe just uh, check it out on Google. I'm sure you can pull up, just say Moser Rolls-Royce, and it's some kind of collab. Beautiful, though. Just the type on this dial. Look at that. That's what you can appreciate. Nothing else, just the typeface. It's all you need. Yeah, we're not done yet, though. We've got some more to check out. Let's see. Streamliner. Oh, right on. So I was so close to using this as the cover. 
but thought to myself, no, has to be on the wrist. How beautiful is that green? Here's a time when you can appreciate what this green represents. The first shot that we used at the beginning of the show, the cover photo of this, was emerald. Now this looks olive drab. I would love to see this in person. That's all I can say. The color is just what Rolls Royce Enthusiast Club. Thank you for that, Andreas. That's awesome. And and Oliver, a couple of others. Rolls uses BMW. And I was thinking that they did. That's so awesome. Um, not owned by the same companies, BMW and Vag. Thank you for that, Russell. Um, Yeti mic. I was about to say this looks like a mic stand, and it does look like I was, something did stick out to me about this. How cool is this arrangement? It's just so clean. I mean, this looks like a design studio, you know. Mm, I love it. You can just sit and stare at this thing for ages and ages. Anyway, I've got to keep murdering through because we still have some to go. How about some Planet Oceans in uh, the arrangement? Mentioning is a great photo. I don't love this watch, but for me, it's a great shot. I mean, that's the thing. The streamliner has divided opinion, but I, I do love how Mozo is now reaching into the 70s space with cushion cases. And uh, yeah, I call it the Green Mumba. If you know Green Mumbas in Africa, they are. Uh, quite terrible right moving on moving on uh Moza does stunning dials some of the best i would say the best in this colorway uh fume is their is their bread and butter okay moving on to planet ocean don't know how much of this we're going to see but it's uh, just amazing the photography again it's just nuts follow his instagram a week on the wrist way too long show mclovin i mean that's the way we do it that is the way these shows go been over three hours Got another half an hour to go. Uh, just some stunning shots around these. Uh, let's have a look at... Oh, the texture is amazing. I don't know what made this watch unique in the space. If it's a ceramic case or not, maybe someone can help me out here. Oh, no. Did the, Oh, that's right, Sam Ray. You're right. Is it just a jinx that the stream is actually going to freeze again on the planet ocean? We'll have to wait and see. Very stealth, as Russell says. I mean, look at that. The photography is amazing, honestly. I'd love to know more about Time Traveler. If you'd like to email me a bit more and, and explain the details, the, the photography is just incredible what you managed to do here. Look at I mean, you can see the individual scratches on the case, what the actual... If you're looking at this in 1080p, I think you'll be able to see... You can see every little bit of grain of sweat and skin and dirt. And these photos are super high res. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Three and a half hours, blue shirt. It's quite miraculous. Eh? I don't know how I do it. I think that's why I take the two-week break. I do think this is a ceramic case, Wisconsin watch guy. Yeah. Beautiful. It looks, I mean, this doesn't look like a watch. It looks like a sculpture when you see it in this kind of lighting. No? Whoa, hold on. We're not, we're going to have a look at an Epijon. Why not? Why not? Epijon, and this is the perpetual, sorry, the the quant, the quantime perpetual rose now the the joke is i think he actually mentioned this in the email that it's been re-nicknamed as the quarantine perpetual rose uh the quantum is quite the uh stunner day date month got a power reserve typical f Jean fashion you don't often see applied numerals on the dial though i mean look at this we're running three and a half hours and we suddenly drop these kinds of things in take it all in as much as you can the depth of the photo yeah uh oh no nope, come back sorry Magic mouse haptic feedback is not helping me here. Texture to the dial, they applied. Oh, this is stunning. I hope the connection's good and you can hear me okay and it's all clean and simple. Uh, moving to the full extended shot of this watch further back. FP Jean. They've been spoken about a lot, though. They get so much attention. Seems like Lunga is going down the same path. They're getting a lot more attention there. Uh, Sam Ray saying, I remember when the Planet Ocean was showcased with Michael Phelps. Really? I didn't even know that he had a partnership with him. That's amazing. Yeah, Sam Ray, I'm quite new to this hobby, all things considered. I've only been looking at watches since about 2015. So uh, it's crazy. My birthday watch. Yeah. Is the minute hand scratched? Oh, that's a good point. Let's have a look. Oh, my. Russell, I don't know what that is might just be refraction. Very good eye you have here. This line leading down to the date. He says this is a problem with HD photos. You can really take it all in. This line leading down here looks like it's linked to this, but maybe maybe it's not. I don't know. No reflection. Oh, macro photography. How did they get that? 31, 12, 21. Yeah. Thursday, December 30, 31. 
Yeah, I don't I don't know what the, the year is. I don't know, I'm I'm getting a bit involved with this now. I'm getting too involved. Uh, didn't notice that scratch on the hand. I would like to know. Uh, time traveler, we've just pointed out this flaw, thanks to Russell, uh, that there's a scratch on the minute hand. Can you can you summarize? Can you find some better photos to show us? Also, a mark on the logo. No way, guys. You guys, are, oh my goodness, this is insane, guys. Good eyes, very, very good eyes. This is funny. This is really funny. How can we be pointing out this stuff on these high-end pieces? I mean, when you buy in these brands, you, you look for those micro details. Hold on a sec. What's going on here? These quarters of the year? I don't know what's cracking. This is fun. This is fun. Not a big deal. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, these watches aren't cheap, but still, take it all in. Macro photography. We're not done yet. We've also my absolute favorite. Oh my goodness. There we go. I think this is the last. This is the last from our time traveler. Uh, yes, we were looking at Jorn's. Someone's joining in uh, custom. <laughs> Some sort of anti reflection underside showing a center pin twice. Maybe it is, Steve. Don't know. Um, and I'm seeing underachieving watch collectors joining us. Welcome. And so many more of you who are still here. Thank you for being a part of these shows and listening in. Now, this to me, the outsized date, we had a, we featured this last show, I think. Uh, Lunga is the goat. Yeah, it is, Stephen. This to me is my absolute favorite. I don't know if we get a full shot of this watch, but this is as good as it gets from a distance. Rose gold, I would imagine. Maybe it's yellow. I can't tell. Large date is just so true to their identity. It's just, this is so typical. Double, double batons. I mean, they were doing double batons before many others in this space. And... It just it does all you need, you know, at the end of the day. And we get some more macro shots to appreciate. Oops, sorry about the magic mouse. After the three-hour mark, the uh, the preview gets a little bit angsty, doesn't enjoy it. Check that out. Have you ever noticed that it's polished on the top and, like, sandblasted on the sides? I didn't. Uh, and so it is. There's just so much to take in with these pieces. Lunga. Lunga deserves love. They deserve all the love in the world. Time portal, step inside. Baltimore Spirits, a little bit late, but I'll catch the beginning ones up. Glad to catch some of the live show. Oh, it's a pleasure having you here. Love this piece. Gold, black, white should be more common. Yeah, I mean, it, it just it works, right? Uh, the problem with gold and white is it just it's too much at once, too much to take in. It seems to be a much more mellow feel around the idea of a black dial with gold. I've always loved it. Let's talk about a ref, uh, negative, negative big date. Yeah, for sure. Seiko QC is perfection, Michael says. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, God of all things. Yeah, we're having a good time. Really having a good time. We're not done yet. We've still got more. Let's carry on. Jeez, like this might this might be a record. Jeez. So, time traveler, thank you for sending these in. Absolutely incredible. Never reaching the end. God. I think everyone's saying, hurry up now. You're wasting our time. Um, another constellation. C-shape, 18 karat gold from the 70s yeah this is a genta design i didn't i didn't know the gen apparently he did apparently he designed these uh these cushion cases back in the day and look at the way the bezel's been done i love that bit of engine turning the texture to the dial gold very gold leaf uh the applied omega logo i mean look at that that's so i mean if you want the three to one feeling the three to one experience that's the same logo that you'll be seeing on there stunning really is awesome and I just I love the variety. These shows bring so much into one space. Yeah, but I've got to carry on now. What else do we have? We have Zeniths, uh, a Resonance, some more Seikos, some G-Shark, and an awesome Nautilus in the moment. Okay, I've got to carry on. I'm sorry for, for the last of you guys who've sent in watches. I've got a motor on. Or I don't want to hit the four-hour mark. That's the secret. These shows have to be under four hours or else it just ruins the, the illusion. Three hours feels a lot more digestible than four. You know, it's like putting $1.99 to something. Okay, okay. Moving next to Valeria. Tobias, beautiful watch. I love the satin dial texture. 18 carats. Seldom you see this. Uh, open watching on the TV. It's amazing, William. This is the way to enjoy these shows, I think. The TV is, is the way to do it. Right, carrying on to Valeria. Is Valeria still in the chat? Somehow, I think he might be asleep. Valeria is based in... Whoa, check it out. Now, that's a good sign. That's some real luck. Valeria, if you're, if you're still here with us, that is a very lucky sign uh, in the real world. If you can catch a snowflake like that, 
Mm, congratulations. You've got some big things coming your way, sir. So. Right. Uh, <laughs> Rewatch guy says, four hours, didn't even submit my watch. Yeah, I've still got quite a bit to go through. But this is his G-Shock. He loves it. And this is on, I'm going gonna, gonna to pronounce this right, Eildon Hill. Eildon Hill. I uh, hope I got that right. Uh, Eric Bell, this, is be this has been your best show ever. You're kidding. Eric, no, that's sarcasm. Surely, surely. We've had better shows. I don't know. These shows come. This is amazing. Got to say, Valeria, I hope you're still with us. Very lucky man. G-Shock in all its natural beauty. I think it's the next brand I should jump on. Good to see it in the snow. I haven't had any snow. I mean, I've been living in the UK for five years, and every year I've experienced snow. Living on the living on the South Coast, you don't get much of it, so it's good. And everyone says, Michael, be right back, peeing. Yeah, don't worry, you're not the only one. I have a colostomy bag. Not a colostomy bag. It's a uh, urinary catheter, and uh, it helps me a lot. Uh, anyway, don't call me Shirley. I don't know what's going on in the chat, but uh, I do love that expression. Yeah, gorgeous watch. Real time. And if I'm not mistaken, the new John Mayer edition, no, it's not. It's a different style to this. I'm useless. It's like G-Shocks and Seikos. I don't know what's going on. But a gorgeous photo. Yeah, as Sam Ray mentions, amazing picture. <laughs> no, Eric, you're a legend. Thank you. And for, for staying through this and listening to me. I don't know. Chaz saying, just back from dinner, what did I miss? God knows. There's been so much. Uh, the Gorillas edition of the G-Shock. You know? do, do I have shoes to match? Uh, Han says. Do I have shoes to match? I've got lots of shoes. Uh, okay, carry on. Valeria, thank you for this. We're jumping next to William. This was a good story. This is a very good story. This is one of the last. It's a DW5600E for anyone who wants to know about that G-Shock. Uh, right. So William sent this in. It's SRPC23K1. He bought this for his 50th birthday. And he considered brands like Rolex and Omega and others, but thought... He needs something to survive through the rigors of day to day and something that he really doesn't doesn't need to cherish so much that just works. And he's just been rocking this ever since. He needed something robust. That was in his email. Give me a long description. Or oh, it's a triple seven. God, I don't know. I don't know, Sam Ray. Please don't crucify me. But it's the the epitome, the epitome of the Seiko turtle in many ways. And this means it's Sunday, right? And I mean, this is just his work watch does everything with it he never takes it off he wears it with suits he wears it in casuals i love it I've got to say what day is it yeah andreas sunday i think japanese generally japanese dates often have red on the sunday to signify it and there's questions about the red line i hope i answered that right yeah so we've got to enjoy this i'm sorry about everyone who's been held up at this last section i've spent way too much time talking over other things so uh william awesome seeing this piece and I'm going to motor next down the line. We've got 15 minutes to go before the four hour mark. I have to cut the show before then. Three amazing, amazing shots coming up next. Are you ready? So, the question that Mark asked about the red line, as far as I know, every Sunday, normally either have Sunday written, and this is a JDM model, maybe it's not. Uh, every Sunday normally has its text in red. Uh, in this case, it's just signified in a red square. You don't need to know the date. That's the, that's the history. Turtles have hacking, Sam Ray. SKX doesn't. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, it's great to have watches that hack. Right, to Victor next. William, thank you for this. Loved your story. You sent me a great story about this piece and what it meant to you in the space. Right. I love the shot. God. This became the community post for this live show from Victor. SBGA211G, typical snowflake on a gorgeous leather strap. And just look at the setting. Oh, no, come back. Tell you this magic mouse, I have to get a new one. I love the setting, the shot itself just captures this. This is, I mean, we were looking at a polar in the snow a second ago. Isn't it funny that I, I just, it's, I'm so nonchalant about these things now because we've done so many of these shows, but we saw a, a polar explorer in the snow a second ago, right? Now we're seeing a snowflake in the snow, and I'm just saying, nah, it's great, it's bad. I've got to appreciate these things more. Uh, we're seeing a snowflake in its natural habitat. I mean, this is what inspired this dial. Look at the texture. It's, God, these photos are incredible. I can never get tired or get over this. Yeah, I think this is the only this is the only snowflake we've seen. We generally get a lot of them, but not not in the wild like this. 
beautiful photograph. This is one of, I think, one of the best photographs of the show. And of course, it has to be saved to the very end. As it is, uh, that's the grand secret to have, Eric. It epitomizes the brand so well in, in the way they've executed the handset. Love those Dauphine sharp edges and so many aspects to it. And the strap choice, as mentioned by Sam Ray and a few others, great strap choice. Dresses it down a lot more, makes it more casual. A real sports watch that's casual. Yeah, it's awesome. Just awesome. I'm sorry if I'm missing you all in the chat. I do have to motor through the rest of this. Uh, Sunday has the red block. Thank you for that exhibit. Um, am I, uh, Mark, mentioning thanks? My pleasure. Okay. Next up, Victor, one of the best shots of the show, hands down. Cannot disagree. Next to Fahim. Now, he sent in, earlier on, he sent in his Vacheron Overseas Gen 2. We're going to be having a look at his pride and joy. Uh, the hands look like they could cut you. Yeah, they're super sharp. I mean, that's the idea, right? That's always been the idea of their aesthetic. It's just beautiful. What an amazing photograph. Tell you what. Carrying on to Fahim. Now, this is his pride and joy, and I thought it's good to share this because he loves his photographs. Again, if you're on Instagram, King Flume. King Flume. <laughs> Getting drunken thumbs here. There we go. Follow him on Instagram and be amazed by the photography. This is his pride and joy. It's a brass movement, genre resonance. There's so much to take in about this watch. I've featured it often on the show, and if Fahim is still watching, which I'm sure he isn't, uh, I saved it for last just so that we can enjoy taking in all the aspects. It's such a quirky watch, you know, frog eye aesthetic. Uh, the whole idea is that these two movements basically counterbalance each other out, and they, they regulate each other. That's the idea. An amazing approach. It's a, it's actually an anomaly that John uh, capitalized on with this piece. Yeah, it's awesome. Really is stunning. And Russell, I'm sure Russell would appreciate this piece. He loves these. You must get yourself into John Russell, I think. But you are a longer fan, right? Looking forward to seeing that when it arrives. But Russell, you're up next. I decided to save this to be one of the last. And then we're jumping to Zira, Ziraha to end the show. Um, John isn't my thing, but this is great. Yeah. It's, it is definitely has its own aesthetic, its own aesthetic in the space. To Russell next. Uh, now, this watch, surprisingly, you didn't know this. But I'm sure a few of you didn't know this, that Patek just uh, discontinued the 5711. Just out of the blue, they decided, no, it's enough. So people are losing their minds. Have I spoken? I think I spoke about this earlier. Yeah, and there's rumors that there's going to be a titanium and a white gold, and I thought, why not feature the Nautilus to end all Nautiluses in the space, the full-on perpetual calendar, the cleanest of all in this area. If it comes to owning a Nautilus, I think this would be the one I would jump on because I, I love the whole idea of you have this this complication on top of sports watch. It's in white gold. And uh, yeah, this is a real value prop. Eric says this will soar. This is the top of the top. And Russell was very fortunate to pick up this. He has a handful of these, I think. Russell's got a very interesting taste in pieces. Like, I always find it fascinating. I can't wait to meet you, Russell, when, when this world opens up for us, right? I mean, he lives 40 miles up the road from me. Um, I just, I love how his take on watches can be so out there and peculiar with brands like Ulysses Nodon, Ulysse Nodon. But then also, he has a selection of like three Nautiluses that, that speak to him the best. And also just loves hopping onto Lunga and picking up those pieces too. Um, yeah, it's it's just great. Lots to take in about this piece. When this was released in Basel World 2017 or whatever, I I got quite I was very impressed, honestly. The first time that they'd ever released this complication in this watch and long overdue. I mean, let's be honest. They've got everything else. They've got time zones and chronographs and everything but this was the top tier it's like a i can't remember the reference it's a 50 40 or something i don't know uh not for me for all the tiger i mean it, it definitely isn't for everyone i i just love the whole juxtaposition arrangement there uh, of a sports watch that has this kind of caliber complication inside it i don't know i like the 40th anniversary more if everyone yeah i mean the 40th has a much more vibrant dial we could say it also i think has a diamond on it and it's yeah peculiar peculiar taste for sure russell i'm giving you a jab and it's the 5740 thank you for that okay so this was the final submission in this high tier caliber and next up we're jumping to some some more el primeros to cap off the show the last five minutes maybe and then we can call it before the end of the three hour mark um now we were just chatting about 
the so Russell says the 40th dial is exactly the same. Oh, really? I mean, you would know. That's great. That is great. And Sam Ray says gender designs are the best longer by a length. I love it. That's one thing. Russell does have such an interesting taste in the space where he picks up the sports paddocks. He does have a few dress paddocks, but then Lunga is also a brand that's just sold him so much lately. So I thought, what a cool way to end the show. This was also by complete chance that Ziraha, who was here earlier, sent in El Primeros for us to look at. And hold on, we've got some movements to enjoy. Let's have a look at that for a sec. And this is just on the new release of uh, the, the Chrono Master Sport. No, is it? Yeah, the Chrono Master Sport. Look forward to talking about it a bit more in the coming week. But we can just appreciate all the little aspects to what makes the movement. And hold on a sec, there's a bit more here. Long exposure, we can appreciate the uh, the movement itself, the whirring of the gears, and I just love it. El Primero, ladies and gentlemen, it's so nice to see that the watch is getting attention, getting a lot more attention as it deserves. I focused in on this class because I thought this is the way to do butterfly deployments. Lots of brands ch cheap out when it comes to deployments, not having push button releases. When it comes to owning a deployment, this is the one for me where it has you know a longer extension on one side and shorter on the other. Just comfortable, superb. This is the watch on the alligator strap itself. And yeah, I mean, is this this is the true, this is the 38, they have so many in the space. This is the 38 mil and it's quite directly inspired by the A386. One thing that I think this watch does better than the Chrono Master Sport is the is the idea of this black ring that runs around. I think it's so nice. It just breaks it up a bit more, you know? Something that I think the, the new one is missing is that black ring inside. It just clear it up. But even the batons are the same. The colorway is the same. We look at the hands and everything there and the subdials. Yeah, it's great. I look forward to discussing it more. I've got to somehow find my voice by tomorrow so I can sit down and do a I don't know, seven or eight minute recording around the watch and talking about the Daytona and all of that there. And everyone's leaving now. It's great to have you. It's been great having you here. Uh, Han saying a toast to me. 38 is the best. It's a good size, good looking movements. Yeah. When we start with luxury, Michael says, yeah, I mean, we have kind of deviated away, right? We're looking at the beaters now in this category. No, I think uh, Zenith, it's just one of those brands. I'm so happy that they're getting more attention now. A column wheel chronograph, automatic. The history behind this watch kind of outshines everything in the space, being one of the first automatic chronos. I mean, we were chatting about, we, we had a look at a Hoya Carrera earlier on, and this is just in that same kind of ballpark as the, you know, the Hoya Carrera as a defined piece. Hans, the pleasure having you here. I think you mentioned uh, top top shows always um never a fan of the squint date got to be 3 p.m date for me that's the thing divides opinion for sure I, i'm not so much of a fan when you have a white date window on a silver dial but it's funny how zenith has just made that their calling card with all of these pieces don't you think uh yeah stunning watch i really look forward to again looking forward to chatting about this and the new release and what it kind of spells for the watch space very interesting. I'm loving how these brands are starting to get more footing in. Um, Ira saying, just joined. Want to hear more about the new Chronomaster? Yes, for sure. For sure. Um, I think if the bezel were blue to match the three subdials, yes, it would not be compared. Blue was one of the colors I've actually played with, for sure. And gray. I look forward to sharing it with all of you. There's there's lots to discuss around, around the model. And that'll be happening next week. By Tuesday, there'll be a video up about it. I think it's well worth discussing this new Zenith model that's been released. Yeah, but to all of you then uh, who've been a part of the show, three hours 55, as we do, as is tradition, I'm going to close this off. We've had hell of a good time. It's funny how I feel more energized by the end of the shows next to, you know, the beginning of them. The beginning of them, it's like it's waking up uh, the first 20, the first half an hour, and then by the end, it's I'm motoring for the next hour. I could probably sit down and discuss this new Chrono Master right now, but I won't because I've got a headache. And uh, yeah, it's been a good time. I was going to say something else. It slipped my mind. I don't know. I don't know. I've lost it. To all of you who've been a part of these shows, who've sent in your pieces, who've been here since the beginning of the show, which is just unbelievable. I cannot thank you all enough for sending in these pieces. That The variety has been amazing. It really has been sports watch madness. Unexpected. Um, must yeah must not be important i know it says that's funny uh another zeppelin another great zeppelin length show love it you guys all of you who wherever you are in the world i hope you're looking after yourselves i hope you are 
taking some time to reflect on your collections. This collection video that I put out um, this week discusses more about reigniting your your love uh, with the collection and what to look for. And yeah, there's there's so much to discuss. This hobby is an endless rabbit hole, grab it hole. You'll get it if you if you watch the video. Mark, thank you for the super chat. Really, it's, it's been an awesome time. Really have rare and attractive show. <laughs> Thank you, Neferion. Come for the watches, stay for the comments. That's always the case. But yeah, I'm going to love and leave you. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to prepare this video and have it done by Tuesday. And then by Saturday, it's going to be a review on this new Seiko that I picked up. So hell, I've got a busy week ahead of me. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do it, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, there's just so much to do and so little time to prep. But, you know, you know, lots of love, ladies and gents. Keep looking after yourselves. Uh, I hope you're, you're definitely taking care with uh, the winter climate that we're in in the northern hemisphere and uh, yeah it's been a good time lots of love as always see you in the next one i think in the next two weeks and until then keep enjoying your watches and yeah as always cheers for now